You're watching Notre Dame Football, presented by Gillette. Welcome to a beautiful fall Saturday in South Bend. Partly cloudy, 64 degrees. Right here a week ago, the Irish were trailing at halftime. They could have been looking at back-to-back -back losses. But Brian Kelly's team turned it around, a dominant second half from the defense, leading Notre Dame to a win over ranked Virginia. The Irish maintain their spot in the top ten. Today, another chance to get the offense to an even higher performance level and see if the running game's renewed production from last week will carry over to this. Notre Dame Stadium is sold out for the 270th consecutive time as the Bowling Green Falcons from the Mac make their South Bend debut. And we welcome you to Notre Dame Saturday here on NBC. So the Irish ranked ninth, they are three and one. This is what we call a sandwich game. Get two big games against Georgia and Virginia, the win at home last week. And coming up, their two rivals, USC and then Michigan, which just survived against Iowa, so they'll likely remain ranked. Bowling Green is at the real foundation level of a major rebuild. So this doesn't figure to be a close game. So Brian Kelly's message to his team, work on you. Make sure you as players and individuals are taking your contract, your steps up, concentrating. So championship traits that you'll need down the line are on display here today. Presented by Gillette, third consecutive year. A team from the Mid-American Conference comes to South Bend. One and three Bowling Green taking on the three and one Irish. Middle of a three game homestand for the Irish off the victory over Virginia. As the players come down the stairs to hit the sign, here's what Brian Kelly told them in the locker room a moment ago. We know what we're here for, but you gotta understand that we do this work with an immense amount of pride. Pride. Pride in our university, pride in our teammates, and pride in the work we do individually. And that is what we have left to do. So sign your name to it, go out and play this game the way it's meant to be played. Fast, physical, and to our standards. Everybody got it? No more words, no more talking, go play the game and sign your name to it and the rest will take care of itself. Let's go have a great afternoon. Let's get everybody to understand there's one standard. Let's pray. One of the biggest favorites in college football this season, Notre Dame in this game, they still have to take care of business. It's USC next Saturday night, but first, it is Bowling Green here in the house that Rockney built. And here come the Irish. stranger to the Mid-American Conference. He spent a couple of years coaching at Central Michigan. Watch his quarterback Ian Book here today. No touchdown passes last week. He is taking care of the ball. Now can he add the big plays to the offense. So the trip from Bowling Green, Ohio by bus to South Bend, Indiana, about 165 miles on that drive. First time the Falcon football team has ever made this journey. And they take the field. Massive rebuild for this football program and trying to do it is Scott Leffer, their head coach, the high profile assistant, last as the offensive coordinator at Boston College. Speaking of Boston College, this guy, Heisman Trophy winner Doug Flutie here, as always. All right, Doug, we've seen a third of the Notre Dame season. It's been pretty good so far. What are the things you've learned about Notre Dame from these first four games? I think the number one thing that stands out, especially from the last two weeks against ranked opponents, this Notre Dame team is as physical as anyone in the country. And they've got great great team speed, especially on the defensive side of the ball. The linebacker position, I've never, I've been around the program for nine years. Right. I've never seen this team speed, especially at linebacker and defensive end. The defense took over the game last week with eight sacks, five turnovers, and a touchdown. You know, Ian Book came in at quarterback last year. There was a wow factor. The offense moved. He made big plays. That hasn't been there yet. What are the things you're watching with the Notre Dame quarterback today? I think he has to slow his feet down and go through his progression. That being said, what he does best mm -hmm. is when he hits that back foot, he's decisive and, and hits those rhythm routes. He did that when he came into the game last year and all through the season. This year, it appears that he's starting to question what he's seeing and hesitant and holding the ball. Be more decisive with the football. Trust your 
rise. Love you and Chris Sims keeping an eye on that during the game. He'll be going against a defense that's coached by a very familiar name to Irish fans. More on that. A good afternoon to Catherine Tapper. Good afternoon, Mike. Yes, Bowling Green defensive coordinator Brian Van Gorder, a former Irish defensive coordinator, and he told us this week he does have added emotions coming back here to South Bend. Now, he and Brian Kelly go way back. Nearly 30 years ago, they were both assistant coaches at Grand Valley State, and when Kelly was named head coach there, Van Gorder was his first defensive coordinator. They worked together again here in South Bend for three seasons until Van Gorder's contract was terminated just four games into the 2016 season after that 38-35 loss to a Duke team led by current Giants quarterback Daniel Jones. Now Kelly told us yesterday he's looking forward to seeing Van Gorder and this was the scene in pregame just a few moments ago but he said we're going to talk about everything but football. He also said we have faced a Van Gorder in two of the last three games. Montgomery Von Van Gorder a former Irish backup quarterback is an entry level assistant at Georgia. Mike. Well Catherine certainly emotional for Brian and for his family as well but it was great to see that. Embrace with Brian Kelly who spent a few minutes on the field talking some memories for Brian of course from his years here as Notre Dame will try to take care of business in this game see a lot of their players on the field and Scott Leffler will see if his team can put off uh, what will be one of the biggest upsets in years in college football first October Saturday good to spend it with you here in South Bend with Notre Dame and Bowling Green. BG, he's from Avon, Ohio. And back deep to receive, it's Joe Wilkins for the Irish. A lot of different personnel changes for Notre Dame. We'll detail them as we go through. It is a bit breezy. And the ball falls off the tee, so we'll do take two on this one. So the Irish student section, full credit to them. Attendance for students at college football games is not very high around the country. This is one that you might skip if you were a student. Not these kids. They are here ready to support their school. These are special Saturdays on campus. Couple deep in the end zone. Wilkins will take an E in the Irish. And will start at their own 25. So handle the ball for their name includes Tony Jones Jr. off a career best 133 yards and three touchdowns against Virginia. Case Claypool will play on a sore ankle. Up front, Robert Hainsey. One of the guys at Pro Football Focus, he's graded out the best on the offensive line so far. His front five now starting for the fifth game in front of Ian Book from El Dorado Hills, California. This start number 15 in Ian's career. It begins from the 25, and Book will pull it down and get it to Tommy Tremble, the tight end, who has made a good entry to the Notre Dame lineup. He'll gain six yards. Anthony Sotolongo. On the tackle. He said limited mistakes, but just two interceptions on the year to go with those 10 total touchdowns. Yeah, I really think he's starting to be a little cautious with the ball, not trusting his eyes, not, not wanting to take that risk and make the tight throw. Six on the first one. On the next one, it goes to Michael Young, who is met quickly on the edge. Very good play by Caleb Biggers. One of two corners on this Bowling Green team that has given up 38 points per game. But they force third down here. Great reaction by Biggers to fight off the block and get there before he has a chance to get his head upfield and turn. Nice form tackle, wraps him up. Good start for Bowling Green. Biggers out of Prince Frederick, Maryland. It was a backup safety. They didn't move to corner because the program was so thin in that spot. This program is thin at every level. This rebuild happening for Bowling Green. Three man rush. Book will take off. They're trying to get to the first down line and will not do it. Stopped at the 31 by Jordan Anderson. So a three and out out of the gate for Bowling Green on their opening drive. Well, that's a third and medium distance, just six yards. So you have some hook routes. There's some tight windows and really nowhere to go with the ball. Ian Book moves out of the pocket. He's got his eyes to the left. Good feet, good balance. Nothing there. It was zone coverage taken away. Nice three and out for the Brian Van Gorder defense. Yeah, as Catherine told you, the return of Brian Van Gorder off to a good start there. Jay Bramblett back to kick it for the Irish. We'll be caught at the 27 yard line. Jake Rogers made a man miss and he'll return it about four yards. Tackled at the 31. There is a penalty flag down. 
for the first time today. And we will hear from our referee, Jerry, Jerry McGowanus. During the return, illegal block in the back, number 22 receiving team. 10 yard penalty, first down. And Magdalena's with the ball, the backup Bowling Green's offense. I used to get so frustrated. You're standing on the sideline waiting for your team to get the ball. You're the quarterback. You just want just fair catch the ball. Just catch it with no penalties <laughs> and start to don't have it negative to back us up another 10 to fit, you know, whatever it is. Just catch the ball, secure it, and let's go off. The drive will start from the 19 yard line. Darius Wade, lefty in his sixth year of uh, his college football eligibility. We'll detail what's happened to him along the way in a bit. First carry for Bryson Denley. He'll go to the sideline, and not much there on that first down run. It's a Bowling Green offense as Andrew Clare, usually in the backfield, most productive player over 1,500 yards in the last two plus seasons. Trying to get Quinn Mars the ball in the pass game. Jack Kramer, the center, already has his degree. He's one of the leaders on this team. One of the leaders on her name's defensive front got hurt in the first play. Myron Tongovailoa Amosa, who had a very big play in the game last week against Virginia, the 48 yard forced fumble return. And he gets hurt right here. Holding his lower leg, so unclear to see there what happened. We'll see him whip around there. So, as the athletic training staff for Notre Dame is out there checking Myron Tango Valoa Amosa out, we'll step out for a moment. Tango Valoa Amosa has done a very good job in there for the Irish starting this season. The end of that play, Doug looks like uh, Julian Okpar just fell on his leg. Yeah, you, you know, you, you coach hustle, get to the ball, as many helmets to the ball as possible. Everybody chasing from all the way across formation. And Julian acquired trying to get in there late, falls on his leg. Right there, and then with the uh, shoe underneath the shin, that bruise there, so they'll uh, continue to look at it and treat him. It was on the first down play that lost a yard, so it'll be second and 11 for Bowling Green. Darius Wade is an athletic quarterback, but maybe not a pure thrower. In the 18, he's back to pass, almost hit by Aquara, but got rid of it complete to Bryson Denley, and Denley will struggle to get back to the line of scrimmage. And probably lose a yard, Osmar Bilal, 22, first there for Notre Dame with third down coming up. Well, that was Julian Aquara coming off the edge, and this is a speed rush. This is dipping, getting a little bit low, and getting by. Great job by Darius Wade getting the ball out. For a National Defensive Player of the Week with that uh, second half turn up the heat performance. He's lined up on the right side this time. Colin Kareem up at the top, rushing off the left defensive end for Notre Dame on third and 12. And Wade gets it out quick. They like to get it in Quentin Morris's hands. Morris taken to the sideline by Troy Cry Jr. And that is a, a very quick three and out for the Bowling Green offense as well. Here's Catherine. Well, Mike, good news. It's Myron Tungo Bailoa Amosa. It was a right leg injury. They put a pad on his right shin, taped him back up, and he is going to be ready to go back into the game. All right, Catherine, thank you. You notice Bowling Green getting the ball out quick to the wide receivers. Little motion, little fake. Get, it, get the ball out quick. Do not hold the football. Matt Naranjo is a lefty punter. He will get it away. Chris Fink back, fighting the win. 53 yard boot. Fink takes it from the 25. Reverses field and will lose five yards. Well covered by Bowling Green. Their starting middle linebacker, Brandon Purse, on the tackle for the Falcons. Notre Dame football is brought to you by U.S. Bank. Unlock your possible. By Gillette, the best a man can get. By Jersey Mike's subs. Be a sub above. And by Jeep, the all new 2020 Jeep Gladiator. 69 years ago, that young man graduated from South Bend, from Notre Dame. Great to have everyone send in their pictures as they watch the Irish from wherever they are around the country, week in, week out. First down run, Tony Jones Jr. He was terrific last week and gets off to a good start here with a first down gain of 13 behind the block of Robert Hainsey. It's Hainsey and Komet, 84. 
that make the key blocks. He stretches it wide. The good cutoff by Hainsey to seal the edge to allow Tony Jones to get outside. The 33 right back to Jones to the left. Another first down for Jones to midfield. 17 yards there as Jamari Bozeman, the safety, made the tackle. This time it's 74. Eichenberg on the left side making his block. But this is different from last week. The two tight end stuff that was getting going, getting the running game started. This time they're a little more spread. Officially a gain of 18. Jones right back to work. He'll get to the 43 yard line. We talked to Tony Jones Jr. yesterday, and he really talked about the second half of getting back to the way Notre Dame set an offensive tour the last couple of years. They were a dominant physical run team. That hasn't been present until last week. And last week in the second half, they found this two tight end package and really got it rolling. Four in a row for Jones. Only Green rallies two and the third in the yard after the tackle was made by Jerry Roberts. Strong side linebacker. Only Green defense. David Konowalski in his sixth year. His last year with a torn Achilles. So a special teams tackle for Brandon Percy. He's the top tackler on the Falcons with Roberts and Coleman. Juwan Hudson, true freshman, pressed in service for the lack of depth. This team only has 67 scholarship players. 85 is the max. Third down, and a back shoulder throw is complete to Javon McKinley of the Irish inside the 20 to the 17 yard line. It's a pickup of 23. Well, this is nice. He's taking his time. It's one on one on the outside. It's obvious man to man coverage. You have a tall receiver. Put the ball in the back shoulder because he doesn't have to beat up the field. Put it in a position your receiver can make a play. Jameer Smith, the back. First and 10. Ian Book looking end zone. Touchdown, Tommy Tremble. Preston to service with the early injury to Cole Komet has become a big factor in this offense. Really quiet feet and good protection for Ian Book. It was Cole Komet that went up through the middle of the field and took the safety out of the picture so Trevor could go up the seam. Again, what I'm looking for out of Ian Book today is to be quiet feet, deliberate in his reads, and deliver the ball with authority as far as being decisive. Very comfortable there. Very easy. Six play, 80 yard down the field drive with a 17 yard score. For Tremble from Johns Creek, Georgia. Jonathan Doerr on to add the extra point. And he does just that. Balance drive, 40 yards on the ground, 40 yards in the air. The last 17 for the tight end, Tommy Tremble. Ian Book's ninth touchdown pass of the year. First score this Saturday. Irish on top, 7 to nothing. Sports app to watch thousands of live sporting events. Stream for free with your NBCSN subscriptions. For details visit NBCSports.com slash live. Put that camera there in the tunnel. Players touch that sign. Everyone wants their picture taken with that sign as well as they come through. We did. We did start the season. We sent out a really cool, uh, I don't know if it was Instagram or Twitter or TikTok, whatever the kids do these days. Me, you, Catherine Tappen, touching the sign to start the season. Touch back, Bryson Denley with the catch. The Bowling Green offense will start at the 25. We saw Tango Veloa Amosa hurt, but he acquired Kurt Heinish, Khalid Kareem. That old career up front was awesome in the second half against the Cavaliers last week. Jeremiah Ousu Koromoa, more of a role in nickel situations as this goes on because there is an injury to Sean Crawford. He's going to be out three to four weeks, so Tariq Racy steps in as the new starter in the secondary. There's Tango Veloa Amosa, as Catherine told you earlier. Will return, has returned. So the lefty from Delaware, Wade, hands it off on first down, run inside for a couple of yards to Bryson Denley. Doug, you're familiar with Darius Wade. He was a Boston College quarterback. He thought his football career was essentially done. He had transferred to Delaware and his shoulder didn't play. And then when Scott Leffler got the job, they were still thin at the quarterback spot. The guy who he knew from Bowling Green was available, and here he is, quarterback in the Falcons. And it was very last minute. Quick pitch to R.B. Marlowe. A little bit of the speed trying to use the edge. Jameer Jones comes over and makes the tackle. Jones had a, a big sack forced fumble last week against the Cavaliers. Darius Wade had talked to Coach Leffler about maybe being a grad assistant. He was giving up on football and had three different doctors told him he, didn't, he would be able to throw the ball again. And all of a sudden, the arm came around last second, got in contact. The other transfer became ineligible, wasn't going to play, so he had an opportunity to step in. 
third and ten against a four-man rush. Jones got right through the block by the running back. And he and Julian Aquara meet for the sack. Back to the 21-yard line. Jameer Jones, 44, coming through untouched. Takes one on the back, throws him aside, and makes the play. Jameer Jones made the play of the year so far last week against Virginia, causing the fumble return down to the eight-yard line. And he's a guy that may have wound up red shirt in this year and now pressed into action. With Dalen Hayes' injury, Hayes is out for the season. Punt rush is on. Naranjo gets rid of it. Fink's going to catch it to the 28. There's Fink. Turns it up. There, there goes Fink across midfield. Almost broke it. He's down at the 47-yard line. 24 on the take back of that 51-yard kick. Chris Fink saw a lot of daylight. Almost hit a home run. 8.30 Pacific time, live from New York. Mike Tirico, Doug Flutie, Chris Sims on the field. Terry McCauley, our rules analyst here in the booth. The aforementioned is tapping on the sidelines. Seven nothing Irish as they scored in their second drive. Their third starts for the 46, and Avery Davis gets a carry. Gain of six yards for Davis. He started this year on defense with injuries, moved to the offensive side, and uh, looks like he'll stay over there for the rest of the year. Chris Sims, what do you notice from the sidelines this game's got to go with a few drives? Well, the, the first thing that's apparent is the size advantage Notre Dame has, guys, up front. I mean, it is uh, a true noticeable thing. Notre Dame's so much bigger than this front of Bowling Green. And second and four, it's a book before he gets hit. Finds the crosser and Chase Claypool, who's out to the 20-yard line. Good run after the catch by Claypool. Book got hit, along with a couple of other Irish linemen who were down. But they do connect on a gain of 19. Pass rush comes from his left and he gets drilled into his own lineman but stands firm and delivers a strike to Claypool. Catch 22 on the season for the senior Claypool. Battling that left ankle injury. First down. Quick toss. Come Touchdown. Notre Dame. Cole come Making quick work of that one in front of the safety. Jamari Bozeman. And the Irish have another quick strike. Touchdown drive. A little play action, linebacker step forward, Komet right up the seam. We saw a similar type play last week where it appeared Komet was open, and Ian Book held on just a fraction of a second and didn't make the throw. Much more decisive today. Clear vision up the field, Komet. He's made it since he's been back from that broken collarbone. Just a different element to this offense. Came back with nine catches against Georgia, had four more against Virginia last week. That is his second touchdown of the season. And for his career, Jonathan Doerr on for the extra point. And the Irish on top, 14 nothing. You want to see quiet feet and strong performance of Ian Book. Six of six, 84 yards, two touchdowns to his tight ends. One to Tommy Tremble, one to Cole Quebec. 14 nothing. Home team. Tech on the second, limited number of tickets still available. Secure your seat today at UND.com slash buy tickets. Trumpets under the dome. It's a 4 10 p.m. tradition on Fridays of game week. They also do it on Saturdays. The rotunda of the main building here on campus. Well, Darius Wade started, played a couple of drives, and Grant Loy now has a helmet on. It looks like Loy, the redshirt junior from New Washington, Ohio, is going to come in the game for Bowling Green. Doors kickoff is going to be fielded at the three. It was a high kick into the wind and will be returned just across the 15 yard line. 17 by Bryson Denton. So after a couple of drives with Wade, it'll be Grant Boy coming in. And Will Bauer, the musician for Drew Davis. So I'm looking at his wrist there on the field, his left wrist, and he is down. Yeah was injured so Bauer be assessed by the athletic training staff sophomore linebacker out of Pennsylvania look up there is shoulder as well as left shoulder it's amazing how calmly he's explaining what what happened there so here is Bauer coming in he's, and that's right where the hit happened as well and his arm gets looks good pinned there as well he was getting up and there Left side there is kind of 
Look there, and then as Patrick Pellini came in, kind of started to feel some of that pain in that uh, wrist and it, shoulder area. It looked like he was protecting it, it did, the whole bit, time after yeah. after the collision, after the initial hit. But it just amazed me how calmly he sat down, described what was going on with whatever's happening with his shoulder, arm, whatever, and having a quiet conversation. So he'll come over and be assessed as we get back to Grant Loy, who played in three games so far for Bowling Green. He's throwing 18 passes on the season. And he will uh, hand off inside, and there'll be a loss of a yard or so with Davon Jones. Jason, Adam Lola makes the tackle. Well, with Roy, I think you've got to think Tim Tebow. You know, zone read stuff, power football running with at the quarterback position. He really throws the ball hard. I mean, I saw him warming up and throwing yeah. around in pregame. But not a pure touch passer, which is evident there on the move. I think Tebow, in terms of size and what they're trying to do offensively. Scott left for around uh, Tebow in the Florida days among these many stops. Uh, this is such a hard takeover uh, for this coaching staff as we mentioned 67 scholarship players out of the 85 half the roster just under half has freshman eligibility. This program was a uh, rock bottom when he took over all kinds of trouble here and Lloyd will get rid of it. It'll be incomplete and that'll be a third consecutive three and out as Bobby Green is still looking for its first first down of the afternoon. Now Jack Lamb just snuffed out the screen and Lloyd threw it into the ground intentionally protecting the football as far as pass protections mm -hmm. ball out quick screens movement. They do not Bowling Green does not want to be just dropping back and throwing the football. They, they just cannot match up with Notre Dame. So the lefty from Stokie Illinois is back again. You see a lot of Matt and Naranjo here today. Took over midway through last season as the Bowling Green punter. Throw out, kick it on the run, 49 yards as Chris Fink backpedals at the 35. Gets to midfield where he is stopped. And the Irish will take over on the Bowling Green side of midfield again. Chris, perfect start for Ian Book thus far. Yeah, it's been a great start. I mean, this is a, some of the issues we've talked about. It's been a little jumpy in the pocket. Well, what have we seen today? We've seen very calm feet in the pocket, which he should be because he's got phenomenal pass protection. We've seen good decision making and decisiveness, just getting back there and letting it rip. And that's something I think that Doug and I expect out of him. He's teased us with it. We saw it last year, and we just want to continue to see him do this this year. And that uh, echoes what the Irish coaching staff, both Brian Kelly and Chip Long, the offensive coordinator, have talked about. Avery Davis with a run for about three yards, pulling guard Aaron Banks in front of him. Brandon Purse making the tackle, and the helmet of Caleb Biggers came off. So he's going to have to come off the field for a play. I think the biggest thing we see right now today is that he does have pass protection, so he's comfortable in the pocket, confident. And I love the seam route for a touchdown. He allowed the inside tight end to eliminate the safety and then relax, throw that, that seam route up to Tommy Tremble. Uh, very comfortable and relaxed. Saw that record 12 and 2, those two losses, Clemson. And at Georgia, Georgia, Braden Lindsey, the speedster from Oregon, comes around to take the jet sweep. He gets to the 44-yard line before Colby Coleman makes the tackle. Lindsey seeing more action for the Irish here. Lawrence Keys, who uh, has been in a good offensive flow, out with an injured foot. That, today. That's pretty significant right there. I mean, if you just want to run zone blocking and run the ball straight forward, you could probably push the line of scrimmage five to ten yards. Third and four, Book will keep, get it to Cole Komet, who got a block from Chris Fink, bowls over the would-be tackler, Jamari Bozeman, and a first down at the 34-yard line. Chip Long loves his tight ends. He's uh, the offensive him. coordinator. You That's know, his coaching hey, position, right? If, if, he's, if, if your offensive coordinator is coaching your position, you're going to get the ball. Right. It's movement, it's using the tight ends as blockers on, on the run game, and then releasing into the flat on the nakeds. Here is Book going end zone. Claypool touchdown Notre Dame. Chase Claypool from 34 yards out. And the Irish score again. 
Blake Poole one on one on the outside running a post route with no safety help. When there's no safety in the middle field, that ball can be thrown all the way across the field. Anywhere to the inside is a good throw. That's a little too easy for, for a talented receiver like Claypool to have no safety help. One on one, Ian Book delivers a strike. I mean, your eyes light up as a quarterback when you see no one in the middle. All of a sudden, you've got one of your best receivers running to the post with no safety help. It's a 34 yard score. The Irish have scored three touchdowns on their last 13 plays. Four. The extra point. First Tremble, then Comet, now Claypool. His third of the day. His third of the year. Notre Dame's third of the day. Four touchdowns last year in that breakout season for Chase Claypool, looking to have a big numbers type season, and it's starting to build here a little bit. Caught six balls last week against Virginia. He catches a touchdown here. To make it three consecutive drives with scores for the Irish. The challenge today for Notre Dame is to play their best, to play at championship level, even though the opponent may not be there. And that is what they're doing. I mean, the first possession was three and out, but after that, everything has been really tight. Doors kickoff is fair caught for his uh, touchback as Denley just takes a knee at the 25 yard line. Scott left his team. Will take over. I mentioned Scott Leffler became Bowling Green's 20th head coach back at the end of November. Mike Jinks, who we'll see next week as the running backs coach for USC, had this program a four win season, a two win season, and then Jinks was let go after a one and six start last year. Leffler, who has been around BC, Virginia Tech, Auburn, Temple, his alma mater, Michigan, and the NFL with the Detroit Lions, a very well respected offensive coordinator. We're finally getting a head coaching opportunity. Start. Offense. Number 72. Five yard penalty. First down. And uh, it, was, it was a pretty simple assessment program. We have beyond a long way to go. Uh, oftentimes you take over a job, there's experienced players there. This program lost most of uh, its depth. There were only a couple of running backs on scholarship, only a couple of corners on scholarship, one quarterback eventually. So they really are trying to piece together a survival season as the quarterback Loy keeps and gets out to the 27 yard line. Best play of the day so far. Bowling Green's first four drops. We talk about the Tim Tebow mentality of quarterback. He's six foot four strong. He's going to lower his shoulder. He's not going down. He runs that little zone read thing. Come to the outside. Good positive game. Now left there offensively, scheme wise. He's got it all, and I love a lot of the concepts they do. Right now, they're just undermanned. Well, they've got good coaching here. Terry Malone's their offensive coordinator. Catherine told you the game by Brian Van Gore, defensive coordinator. Second and seven, and Loy throws underneath and is complete to Quentin Morris, who is hit hard by Kyle Hamilton, the freshman safety from Atlanta, Georgia, who came up with his second interception against Virginia last week. Kyle Hamilton at safety, the freshman. Watch him read and react so quickly. It's an under route, comes a nice delivery, a broken tackle, but he's full speed. Hamilton reads, I mean, so quick for a freshman to see things. The interception he made last week was phenomenal. He's been an eye opener so far. A far spin move. He and Colin Kareem run into each other on the rush. So Lloyd takes off and Bowling Green gets its first first down of the game at the 37 yard line. Good run by Grant Lloyd. Let's move the change for the first time for BG. Well, the two best pass rushers, Aquara and Kareem, collide as they're looping to the middle, go to the ground, and he escapes out to the outside. I'll tell you, he, he moved the chains last week against Kent State two weeks ago, I guess, mm -hmm. and uh, put the ball in the end zone twice. Bowling Green did have a bye week, but they did play Kent State the week before their last game. Lost 62 to 20 to Golden Flashes. Here's Loy on the move again. And he'll get another first down as he runs for 10 yards right to the 47 yard line. All right, he's getting soft on me, coach. He just ran out of bounds. What the heck? Six foot four, big strong guy. Just, I'll tell you, making plays. You know, allow it to help. He really composed on the one before that. He allowed people to turn their back and let them go before making that decision. Trevor Lawrence. The hair, you have the hair <laughs> and the size. First down run there. It was a yard short of the first down. Colin Kareem will join Jason Adamilola on the tackle. 25 left here in this first quarter. 
Greens, four games this year. They beat Morgan State, the FCS opponent in their opener, 46 to three. They then lost at Kansas State, 52 nothing. Lost to Louisiana Tech at home, 35-7, and then the 62-20 loss we mentioned to Kent State. Good blitz pick up there by Davon Jones as Loy looks to the sideline and throws it away, incomplete. Davon Jones, another transfer from Boston College right here, tailback, and we were talking to Tony Jones about pass protection and warning it. He wants it. He wants a piece of it. Steve Adazio over BC built some tough kids. Yes. And weight room tight kids, and that's what Davon Jones is. Adazio, the Boston College head coach. Jones, not only a BC transfer, he played linebacker at BC. In addition to running back, the keeper for Loy here, Jeremiah Usu Kormoa, comes over, makes the tackle at the Notre Dame 43 yard line. So third and three. Usu covered some ground. Oh, he does. I mean, there was a seam there. He is so quick. His change of direction is quick twitch. He is one of the uh, quicker players on the Notre Dame defense. We asked him yesterday, the fastest. He said, no, Asmar Bilal, the linebacker, is the fastest. But you see the versatility. He's there in the slot. Doug circle him for you. He's going to play some nickel now with the injury to Sean Crawford. Loy rolling it, throwing it complete to Quentin Morris on the sideline, who stays in bounds. And gets the first down. Nice looking drive here for Bowling Green. The game doesn't look too big for Lloyd. He's relaxed. He took his time here. It broke open, but he couldn't turn the corner yet. And then delivered actually a soft throw. I, the entire warm ups, I thought Boy was trying to throw the ball through a brick wall. I mean, it was spinning, and he was drilling everything hard. There he showed a little bit of touch. Julian Ortega Jones with the pick on that play. We have a second ball on the field. And we stopped the game for a second because of that. It shouldn't be a it's a, it's a timeout. Coach, it's not a pick. Are it's, they reviewing? It, oh, it's a run. No, well, it was it's a, a block. block. <laughs> <laughs> he, blo he blocked him out there. The, we're going to start with the pass, offensive pass interference conversations, but there is a look at that. They wanted to make sure that he was inbounds. I don't know if they stopped the game. I don't think they stopped it for a review. As you see, that back of the heel did not come down. No reason to bring in Terry McCauley just yet. But he's ready if needed. At the 34 on first down, it's a couple of yard run inside. For Davon Jones once again. It's pretty cool, Doug, to see a guy who played linebacker come back and uh, play running back as well. Well, he realized he wasn't going to get any playing time at BC at running back with A.J. Dillon over there. And he moved the linebacker to help the team out. He's one of those guys that wants to get on the field. He's built like a linebacker. And now he's back at the running back position. He can play the game more physically. Want to finish his career carrying the ball. He's getting that chance at BG. Final seconds of this first quarter as Loy's pass is high and incomplete. Looking for Julian Ortega Jones. 20 seconds left. This is a tough one for Brian Kelly. We mentioned the game sandwich game. Look, the, the opponent is not tough given where Bowling Green's program is you see Mac teams that are competitive against power five teams on a regular basis just in the cycle from when this game was booked relative to where they are now this is just about as low an ebb as this uh, very proud Bowling Green program has been at so Brian had to make sure that he got his guys right for the effort this week Loy throws complete again it's Morris crossing and he'll bust through a couple of tacklers in Hamilton and Gilman to get the first down as Bowling Green has put together a nice fourth drive in this first quarter. Watch the pick happen somewhere in the middle of the field here. As you, these aren't rubs, these are picks. Boom. But nice job getting underneath. Now Morris is a tight end body, plays receiver slash tight end. And physically, he saw an opportunity to get a first down, puts his shoulder down, and gets it. End of one. The score for Notre Dame 21, Bowling Green up from Fort Church Notre Dame Stadium. After these messages from your local station, glad you're hanging with us on this Saturday. You're watching Notre Dame football on NBC, presented by Gillette. Back in South Bend, second quarter, Notre Dame football presented by Gillette on this Saturday. Mike Tirico, Doug Flutie, Chris Sims, Terry McCauley, Catherine Tappan, Rob Hywins, our producer, Pierre Musa, our director. We're here for week two of a three game homestand, USC next Saturday night in prime time before the Irish have a bye week, and then we'll take on the Wolverines in Ann Arbor. Avon Jones with his carry for Bowling Green. 
keeps the pile going for a moment until Kurt Heinisch stops it. We've yet to see Andrew Blair, who's one of the more talented offensive players for Bowling Green. He features in the run game, but it's been Jones and Denley so far. Grant Loy, the quarterback. That pass is caught, and Jones goes right down. The Bowling Green is doing a great job of getting the ball out. I mean, whether it's movement of the pocket or the zone read stuff and throwing little under routes. Like I said, you don't want Loy, you don't want your quarterback standing in the pocket trying to hold on the ball. They are outmanned physically, so they have to find tricky little ways to get the ball on the perimeter. The player is one of those guys who has done some good work on the perimeter uh, during this season. But on the bench through this first quarter. Third and ten moving on the left guard. Matt Tanner. Well, Tony Kareem jumped as well in the ball start offense number 75. And he was on the other side of the line. Third down. But when your offense flinches, it's on the offense. He saw Tanner move and got in there. Sam Neverov is usually the left guard, but he's uh, out with an injury, so Tanner's going to pop over here and get the start in this one. Tim Tanner Blair, 69, is the starting right guard for the Falcons today. We're in field goal range, third 50. Four man rush. O'Quara chasing. That ball is five yards shy of the line of scrimmage that has all the earmarks of intentional grounding. And it is. And that'll take him out of field goal range. The problem where intentional grounding. Offense number 13. The pass did not get beyond the line of scrimmage. That's a spot foul. Lost it down. Fourth down. Well, the problem is you're in third and 15 against a good pass rush team, and that's the start of it. And both defensive ends got up the field in a hurry, and he runs out the back of the pocket. I, I think he's going to have to try to at least step up through in those pass situations, uh, but the pocket is not going to be there in, in definite passing situations. You can get in the neighborhood of the line of scrimmage and be okay, but that was uh, five or six yards shy of it. So the loss of 21 because of the spot foul takes them out of that field goal range I had mentioned. And Matt Naranjo is back to punch it away on fourth and 36. And Chris Fink will fair catch it for the Irish at the 14. Notre Dame. Three touchdown drives in a row. They took a total of 13 plays. That offense back on the field. Proud of uh, his Bowling Green roots. Doc was here, of course, on New Year's Day when we had the Winter Classic on NBC. And the Bruins and the Blackhawks played, called the game. Siegel Flemister, the first down carry there. Three or four. Oh, Isaac Izuba, that's the uh, unofficial song for uh, Bowling Green. You'll, if you see uh, someone wearing BG colors, they're orange and brown, say Isaac Izuba to them, their eyes will open up and uh, smile. Which is a uh, school of proud history and heritage. Multiple sports. Think of uh, football. Detail that later. Basketball along the way. My pal Dan Dockage coached at Bowling Green. Hockey. In addition to Doc, they've given us some hockey players over the years. Flemister with the carry. Out to the 23-yard line. Colby Coleman on the tackle. Third down coming up. This offensive line has dominated the game so far for, for Notre Dame. They, they ran the ball exceptionally well in the fourth quarter last week against Virginia. They went to a two tight end package to do that today. A lot of zone type of blocking, just shoulder to shoulder and, and pushing the defensive line around. The in book has uh, hit all eight passes so far today. So Tommy Tremble in motion. And Tremble will have catch nine. He'll have a first down to the 30. One yard line ball comes out as he goes out of bounds. Good move to chase. We're talking about the uh, two tight end set and the different look in game for the Irish. And it paved the way for Tony Jones. And that two tight end set, a lot more success against the Cavaliers. This is Flemister running this time to the 35 yard line. Had a touchdown last week. And, and Tremble. When you saw him, Doug, in the summer, you think, okay, this is not the guy who's going to be a dominating run blocker, but he's given them more than I thought he would as a blocker. No question about it. We saw him as a receiving tight end and running up the seam and making catches and looking athletic, but as an inline blocking tight end, he's doing a heck of a job. 
Second and six for Book. Deep shot towards Young and Michael Young with two DBs back there. It's incomplete. Fans want to pass interference as Young was going for the ball and contacted by Jordan Anderson. Uh, Young kind of creates the contact, trying to go up over him for the ball. That's a good no call, in my opinion. I'm getting the look from our official down the far end, coach. Terry McCauley, he, Terry's kind of with the fans here who think a flag should have been thrown. He, yeah, he looks like he significantly <laughs> yeah. impedes the receiver's ability it's to bowling catch the green ball. right now, all right? They're losing. <laughs> Book's first in completion now, nine of ten. Five in the pattern here on third down. Book escapes, directs, fires incomplete as he tried to get Claypool coming back. And that will force the Irish to punt it away. Juwan Hudson, the true freshman, was the one who was covering Claypool. He's had to be asked to do a lot in this true freshman season. He's done a pretty good job as well. Jake Ramblin, the second time, will kick it away. Jake Rogers back to receive for BG. Freshman's done a nice job kicking for the Irish this year. It's 49 yards from the 16. Here comes a foot. And another one. Just fair catch it. Right? No penalties. Catch the before. ball. Take it where it is. I mean, even Chris Fink had a minus five return. Mm -hmm. But he's had some good ones today, too. Yeah, Fink did have one. Cy Dabney. Number five there for Bowling Green. Heading back to the sideline. During the return, illegal block in the back, number five, receiving team. Half the distance to the goal penalty, first down. And you see Bo Time Bauer, out. 52, was injured before. Catherine told us in the last break that it was a stinger, that he would return, and Catherine was exactly right, because he did. Weekend ends with Sunday Night Football, Jacoby Brissett and the Colts. Arrowhead bound to take on the MVP, Patrick Mahomes of the Chiefs. We'll get you started with Football Night in America. Kick off seven Eastern time. Starting about an hour 20 after that, right here on NBC. Chance for Irish fans to see the Colts Quinton Nelson, the top offensive lineman in the NFL. First down run for Bryson Denley for Bowling Green to the 14. Remember Quinton Nelson a couple years ago at the sixth block against yes. Georgia? Well, Tony Jones Jr., wearing a different number at the time, was in the picture. And he said he did a good job on his pickup, but nobody ever noticed because Nelson had one of those. Viral blocks. <laughs> and he did, Tony Jones takes a lot of pride in his pass. No one noticed that. Right. Except an old buddy that was a running back back in high school days. He's the only one that texts him. One shout out for uh, his blocking prowess on that one. His play on the sweep to Denley, uh, on the edge, I should say. He's going to get a first down to the 20 yard line. We'll have a halftime feature with Tony Jones. Get to know a little better you know, what it's like for a prep week of football and a little behind the scenes with the Irish running back that's coming up at halftime. See a couple back to back. Nice running plays for Bowling Green. Well blocked up front. Denley picks up the first down. That's got to be their goal right now. It's fine first downs. Fine ways to move the chains. Picked up a couple here with Grant Loy in at quarterback. He's flushed here, but gets it to the tight end. Quentin Morris with a good cut, a good run after the catch by Morris. As he got behind the coverage for a gain of 23 out to the 43 yard line. Again, a lot of mis misdirection. He's going to block down and release. Quarterback on the corner. No one there to cover him. Two guys uncovered, so some of them probably should have peeled off. But when the tight end blocks down, you lose track of your man coverage sometimes, and the eyes go to the back. Talk about eye discipline. Just the 24 on the game at the 44-yard line. Pitch it back to Denley here as they continue to use the misdirection. And he makes the tackle. Chris Sims with the uh, XO options are for Scott left limited because of personnel but he's doing his best with what he has doing his best I would think we're gonna see a trick play off of one of these reverses but when you got a team like Notre Dame who clearly outmatches Bowling Green you know Doug's right that's one of the things misdirection use their speed and aggressiveness against them and it is a smart attack Moved off inside straight away Davon Jones give it three yards Colin Green 
the deck hard for Notre Dame. He is slow to get up. Back over to the huddle. Chris Sims says trick play off the reverse. When they had the ball down on the edge of field goal range on first down, I was expecting Bowling Green to pull out their trick play there and take a shot at the end zone. Didn't happen. They ran it on first down and ended up getting out of down and distance. Davon Jones. We'll see what Scott Leffer will do here on fourth and one. They say you're going for it. Grind out a first down any way you can. It would mean so much to this team. Lloyd tries to keep it and will not get there. That's not happening. Her name jumped in the front where they covered everything up on the inside, almost like a goal line play. And Loy will be marked short of the 46 yard line, and the Irish will take over on down. This is when you turn around and pitch it to your running back behind you after you realize you're getting nowhere. Fourth down, just that's the strength of this Notre Dame defense is the interior. The Irish come up with a defensive stop after a couple of first downs from Bowling Green, and their longest play of the day. Inside the Notre Dame defense gets the job done. Doug Ian Book, when he's throwing two and a half seconds or less, that first read and getting it out. Among the 130 FBS quarterbacks, very good ranking, 10th and 21st. But when it takes longer than that, out of those 130 quarterbacks, yards per attempt in the passer rating significantly down in the bottom 20% or so of all the FBS quarterbacks. What does that say to you that, about Book so far? That tells me that when the first look is there, He's on. He's in rhythm. He's confident. It's it's efficient. He's great at rhythm passing and anticipating. When he has to come off a read and go elsewhere, it's not always smooth because of either vision. The Fink goes up and catches this inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. It's either vision or comfort with the read and getting from one side of the field to the other. But boy, when things are there in rhythm, he is awesome. He is so efficient. Accurate with the football. 24 yards on that catch to the former walk on from Ohio. Now going up top and caught by McKinley. Got the feet down very nicely, did Javon McKinley. Who continues to emerge as not just a good blocker, but a big body inside the 25. McKinley working on Hudson on the outside. Stand firm, give your receiver a shot, don't overthrow it, keep it in bounds. The big guy makes a play for you. Little hand fighting going on, but he went up and got it at the high point. 21 yards there from the eight. Tony Jones Jr. Will be stopped. Now you're Chris Sims. You were right on line with that pass by Book. Those last two passes on this drive very effective. Very effective. They have a huge size advantage at wide receiver to, to, to these bowling green corners. But the thing that jumps out to me about the stats you guys are talking about too. Some of those bad statistics we're talking about with him holding the ball past 2.5 seconds, they're self-inflicted. I think that's what I get frustrated about a little bit. We've seen open people where he hasn't felt comfortable, whether it's passing lanes or whatever else, and we know he can fix these things because we've seen it before. Second to go from the eighth, and Book in the pocket, has Claypool crossing to the end zone. Notre Dame touchdown, Claypool for the second time today. Took a little while to come up, and he gets a little rub here to free up Claypool. He gets across the face of the middle linebacker and out the back door. It's all over. A nice patience by Ian Book, waiting for this to uncover. He knows he's on a run. All he's got to do is get across that middle linebacker's face, and he knows he has him. And he just waited patiently. And then easy trot to the end zone for Claypool. Two for Chase on the day, four on the season. And Jonathan Doerr will take Jay Shannon's snap and the hold from Jay Bramlett. And out through his fourth extra point of the day. Four plays, 53 yards. Less than a buck and a half for Ian Book. And touchdown pass number four in 24 minutes. Coming up, it is the State Farm Halftime Report. Liam McCune, Chris Sims will be on the field. 
I'll tell you what happened here in the first half. Go off the field, Tony Jones Jr. highlights the scores around college football, including a look at that Iowa Michigan poor offensive game, good defensive game that was played earlier today, won by the Wolverines 10 3. All well, coming up, stay for a halftime report in a little bit. Jonathan Doors kick will go bounce in the end zone, an automatic touchback, and the ball comes to the 25. We mentioned Ann Arbor, where Notre Dame will be heading later on this month. Scott Leffler was there in 1997. Michigan had a share of the national championship. Leffler, Mike Elson, the associate head coach, defensive line coach for the Irish. Terry Malone, the offensive coordinator here, and Tom Brady. Tom Brady was uh, part of that uh, 97 team. It's uh, one of the connections that uh, Scott Leffler, when mentioned, is often talked about. He and uh, Elston were roommates for three years during their Michigan time. You know, a lot of Michigan ties on that coaching staff. Terry Malone, we mentioned earlier, a couple others as well. You know, Leffler talked about building championship habits. And he said, let's just look back from my time at Michigan. From when Jim Harbaugh got started, there was always an NFL quarterback in the quarterback room. Gerback and Collins and Brian Greasy, Brady, Henson, Navarre, Henny. Those are all after the Harbaugh stretch there, connected back to back to back to back. This pass incomplete by Grant Loy. And Doug, he said that's a big part of building championship traits. We had people to learn from in that quarterback room. Cam Cameron was the head quarterback coach, by the way, in that era. And that helped build the tradition. And you have someone that is setting the example for you. Your eye teach you how to study, how to learn, build discipline, and you build that winning culture and develop the quarterback position by watching the others. The guy that did that for me more than anywhere else as far as an individual was Steve Grogan in my early years at New England. First down uh, run by Bryson Denley got just to the 35 to where he needed to get to. And that's why Scott Leffler is talking about the patience that's going to be needed here because when he inherited this program, we mentioned the quarterback situation. There's no quarterback in the room there to lead the quarterbacks that are coming in. In the running back room, they only had a couple. They had to get transfers from elsewhere. And that's part of what is going to make this a difficult turnaround because you can't build those winning habits. We don't have veterans to learn from. Grant Loy from the 35 is pressured and throws incomplete. Myron Tunnel by Loa Amosa and Khalid Kareem are coming at the Richard Jr. quarterback. Well, he's trying to make a play and, and spin out of here and get away from this pass rush, but Tango by Loa Amosa, big boy, big guy inside with a big spin move right up the middle. Contain on the outside, there's nowhere to go. The athleticism, size, strength inside, pushing the pocket. And then a little athleticism. Second and ten, the former walk-on now on scholarship, Loy, and it's Davon Jones. Nice spinning run by the former BC back. So shut out so far from the defense coordinated by Clark Lee. It was a takeaway story last week against Virginia, combined with Notre Dame taking care of the ball. This Irish team leading the nation in turnover margin at plus nine. What has amazed me is the two games where teams move the ball early in the game. Louisville, Virginia, he adjusts, changes things up, gets eyes on the ball, reacts faster. All of a sudden, the Notre Dame team's playing fast on defense and changed the game. Great job adjusting on the fly. Third and three, trying to run for it, and Jones will not get there. He's tripped up Paul Moala from Mishawaka High School. Not too far from here in Indiana, tripping him up. After a first down on this drive, Leffler's crew will kick it away. Going back to the leadership thing, though, that's mm -hmm. why they brought in a guy like Darius Wade, who was a six-year guy, talking right. with coaches, how they loved his leadership qualities in the meeting rooms, a work ethic at the Division I level that other guys can emulate. Naranjo kicks it. Fink's got a slide to make the fair catch. And does so at the 22-yard line. It's where... Notre Dame will take over. Offensive line oh, getting it done so far. Yeah, they've taken control of this game early. And, and to get a little zone blocking where they're shoulder to shoulder, just moving people, seal your guys, swing your tail to the inside, create a seam. On the outside, it's the backside pushing it down, and it's a read cut back. So they're just moving people up front, changing the offense, which are the line of scrimmage and moving it. And the pass protection's been ridiculous. It's just Ian Book standing there flat-footed, throwing post route for a touchdown, but he's been able to stand there all day. 
Jimmy Smith is in the game now, and Smith explodes through the secondary out to the 40. Six yard line. Big run on first down there as the O line cleared a pass for a gain of 24. Well, we were just talking about the O line. Watch the right side just work here. And then Jameer Smith taking up two. Nice job picking up the blitz and coming down and sealing. And then you get the kick out. That's recognition. Recognizing a blitz, doing it on the fly, protecting your inside gap. Guys on the left, Eichenberg and Banks were pulling. They were in great concert. And that play was messed up from the start because the Irish. We got a false start flag here. False start offense. Number 72. Five yard penalty. First down. You're right about Eichenberg. I mean, Eichenberg's your left tackle pulling all the way around to the right side. There's athleticism involved here. I know we don't always talk about that in the big guys in the O line, but this Notre Dame offensive line will pull, and they will pull any individual, not just the guards. The center will pull around. The tackles will go side to side. It, it's a very athletic offensive line. First and 15, little touch pass to Avery Davis. Two defenders there for Bowling Green. Brandon Hurst leading the way. Catherine? Well, Robert Hainsey has really seen the growth of his quarterback, Ian Book, from a leadership perspective, Mike. He told me this week, Ian's a great leader. I love his presence back there. I love the way he commands the offense, leads at a high level, and I know he's going to make plays for us. Now, Hainsey, also a captain like Book, said that I just try to do my best every single day and lead by example, be the same guy every day, and don't change. And he's been taking care of business, limiting sacks, hasn't allowed one all year, going back to last year early on. Fake the touch pass there from Book. Nice touch on this pass to Brock Wright. Gets a chance to make a catch and make a run. Wright takes it inside the 20-yard line. It's amazing how programmed you are as a quarterback to do the things correctly. Somebody messes up. He should have come around the backside. So Ian Book still does the fake behind him. Draws people up with all the misdirection. And there goes Brock Wright down the sideline. 40-yard catch for Wright, who uh, has not seen as much playing time, usually does it in a blocking role. The Irish try to come to the reverse, but all over was Nico Lautenden, the Richard senior from Metro, Ohio. Mentor, I'll get it right. Lautenden beat the block of uh, Ian Book. Ian sees him break through and tries to peel back, but can't get to him. Nice job of staying up field and reading what's going on, but a little uh, the trick plays, bringing out the gadgets right now. Similar to the action Bowling Green showed earlier. Loss of nine on that one. Backfield is emptied and five in the pattern for Book. Looking for something open. Now escapes the pocket. And on the run will keep it and will gain yardage and duck out of bounds inside the 26 and 25 yard line. Book had been escaping the pocket early, earlier this season. Avery Davis going up through the middle of the field late, but it didn't happen right away. And and the eyes of Ian Book were out to the outside by that time, and then the scramble happened, and Davis trying to get the attention, but he had moved by then. Stand tall in there and, and anticipate. Those are some big plays that have been uh, left on the field more than a couple of times early in this season for the Irish. Book missed a fifth touchdown pass there. Third and 16, he's got time again. Another end zone shot. Another open receiver. And a touchdown for Javon McKinley. Well, he's got all day to throw. He's looking downfield, can't find anything. And Biggers, the backside corner, just starts to drift a little. Ian Book feels it, but he stayed within the pocket and finds him late. Here, he's watching the quarterback deep, so slide up the sideline, find the dead area. And all that that's that's pass protection and hanging on to the football yeah. and allowing guys to work that you know offensive coordinators like eh, that doesn't count. I don't like that. One. Count the stats are book who's thrown five touchdown passes here in the first half. Jonathan Doerr adds another extra point. 35 13 touchdowns 10 of them coming here against New Mexico and Bowling Green five in the first half Chris Sims. 
guys, the thing that I love about Ian Book, now we saw he missed Avery Davis on that first play there, but he's at least trying to stay in the pocket, not leaving, keeping his eyes down the field. I think one of the things we've talked about a lot is he's looking at the rush and then just abandoning the play. You can tell he's very conscious of that right now. You know, we're, we're talking about these things where there can be an improvement and all that, but he's 15 of 17, 255 and five touchdowns. Let's not lose sight of that. We're just looking for a few little things that Ian can continue to improve on Ian Book. And his eyes are up the field. He's, he's standing in the pocket tall, looking, scanning the field. Now, this is a three-man rush, so he has all day. So hold on to the ball and take a look around. Eventually, someone works open. And one of the reasons I enjoy visiting with Chip Long, the Irish offensive coordinator, he holds it to a high standard. If it's not perfect, it's not right. So he'll continue to push. And he said, Ian Book's going to have to win some games for Notre Dame as the season goes on. And that's why he's been looking at these smaller things. Can you build confidence even though the opponent is not the equal of opponents we'll see Notre Dame play later this year? As this nice run here takes it out to the 43-yard line for Bowling Green's Davon Jones. Absolutely. I mean, the reinforcement of being in the pocket, hitting a seam route on time between defenders to scan a field and get through your progressions, all these are reinforcement for the day that comes that you need that fourth down throw in a pressure situation against a really good football team. Final minute of this first half, Jones runs to 47. I think the world of Ian, I think he's a great quarterback. I, I love his timing, his rhythm, uh, very accurate with the football, extremely accurate, and he's so much more athletic than a lot of people give him credit for. It's just that the aspect of the team that's been missing is the downfield passing game, and they're working on it. Up the middle, Bryson Denley with the run into the Irish secondary. He gets to the 37 yard line with 31 seconds left. Good hard run of 16. Watch Elliott step up and hit. Um, I, I, right away, I thought it was a Lowy Gilman, but no, right, exactly. Jalen Elliott delivering a blow. Bowling Green choosing not to take a timeout. 20 seconds left. Grant Loy will throw in the middle, and that pass is incomplete as it squirts out with 14. Seconds. I'm trying to get to Austin Doris. Shady Side, Ohio, the Richard Senior. Morris and Doris for the two tight ends. Morris sees more of the passes. Doris played at Indiana. It's an academic all Big Ten performer in Bloomington. 14 seconds left in the half. See if they can get points on the board before the half. One chunk play. Four eligibles over here to the right. That pass is caught, but quickly down. Is Morris timeout taken by Bowling Green with eight seconds until halftime. Moving back to 30 seconds. Timeout. Bowling Green. Their first timeout of the half. 30 second timeout. Come from small towns, suburbs, or sprawling cities. Come and belong. Take root, and together we will make this space our own. We'll thrive, master our skills, live in the moment. The conversations after class ends, where real relationships begin, connections are made, becoming a part of something bigger, bigger than ourselves. Belong, stand out, go far at Bowling Green State University. State Farm halftime report coming up with Liam and Chris. The off the field Tony Jones Jr. in the Iowa Michigan game, which looked like about 50 other Iowa Michigan games played in the past. Table for two, please. Mr. Sims, it's actually, we make the reservation for that table in McHugh's name because he gets the good tables from South Bend. But Sims, Sims, Sims will order the wine. Sims rides on our coattails when he comes to town. Stay for our halftime report. Coming up with the guys here momentarily. Down to eight seconds left. Third and seven. And Loy throws incomplete as he tries to slide it in for Quentin Morris. So with four seconds left, looks like we'll take an end zone shot here. It's back end of, uh, or out of field goal range. It'll be 55 from here. So Scott Leffler, see if his quarterback can take a shot at the end zone. Well, he's got the arm. I mean, he can throw the ball through the goalpost and knock the goalpost over the way he throws the football. Julian Ortega Jones is six foot two. Quentin Mars six foot four. And I would keep an eye on Mars down here. He's probably going to run across the field underneath the three receivers going up the field. And a timeout taken by Bowling Green with four seconds left. 
Timeout. Bowling Green. Their second timeout of the half. Doug, I don't know if you know anything about Hail Mary timeout. passes from your days. <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> what? What? What, what, are, what are the important ingredients to plays like this when you're sending three receivers, you have one on that other side, you just kind of alluded to? Well, it, ha it helps to have one big stud receiver that can go up over everybody else and get it. You know, maybe a guy like Brock or Terrell Owens with a big reach. Uh, but the number one thing for a quarterback, buy as much time as possible is always my theory. Buy as much time as possible, throw the ball high so everyone can get to the end zone and see the ball. And so now everybody's on the same playing field rather than your receivers on a dead run trying to get there where the DBs can see it and go up and make a play. And we've seen defenses change how they play it a little bit because oftentimes they'll bring an extra rusher a little bit late to keep the guy from buying time a la Flutie. Absolutely. That's the new thing. It used to be you knew you were getting a three-man rush. You right. had on that thing forever. Now you bring the outside rusher. Bring him around the edge. Uh, you know, get the quarterback to give it. You could even zone blitz them and bring six and just keep the other guys back by the goal line. Here's the end of the half. Roy escapes for space, pops it up there in the air, and it is intercepted. Jalen Elliott said, I'm not going to knock it down. I'll take pick two and career interception number six to end an otherwise perfect half for the Irish. <laughs> Worth celebrating, why not? Falcons will get the kickoff and start the second half. You'll get Liam McHugh, Chris Sims, and the State Farm Halftime Report from Notre Dame. Degree day here in South Bend. Irish terrific in the first half. Leading an outmatch Bowling Green team 35 to nothing before the third quarter begins. We'll look at our first half stats brought to you by FanDuel. As you would expect, they are lopsided in Notre Dame's favor. Despite the Irish only having the ball less than 13 minutes. A lot of quick strike scores. Ian Book five touchdown passes that a first half Notre Dame record. Scott Leffler and uh, this Bowling Green team again very undermanned. Just 67 scholarship players. It's one of those you want to get through these games. Try to get through as healthy as possible as you go back into the Mid American Conference. They play Toledo coming up next week. And Brian Kelly's team. Their sights set on USC after this one, but the second half, Doug, I think we're going to see a lot of personnel for the Irish, assuming the score stays the same. We're going to be interesting to see some of those uh, backup players who will get a chance to play as often. Up to Jacobic, the quarterback, that had the opportunity to get some real playing time, live, live hits, throwing the ball down the field. He hasn't, he hasn't had a possession where he's come back for a second possession yet. That's right. And you know there may be a day down the road they need him this season. So everyone, everyone from a backup position needs that game time experience to get comfortable and be there for when the, their time is called. We'll keep an eye on that as that third quarter gets set to begin. As Notre Dame won the toss and took the ball, so Jonathan Doerr kicks it off. It'll be a touchback. And before Bowling Green gets out there at the 25, put it out to the field and Catherine Tappen. Mike, I talked to Brian Kelly at halftime, and he thought that Ian Book had a little bit of trouble on the first drive of the game reading Bowling Green's defense. So he pulled him aside, said, stay in the pocket, be patient, make sure you're starting to see the entire field. He did say the Irish are going to make some substitutions, as you mentioned, Mike, here in the second half. We can expect to see Notre Dame backup quarterback Phil Jerkovic. As for Bowling Green, Scott Leffler told me that he told his team just keep plugging away. This is a great opportunity for us to improve our own team. Junior running back and a leader on this Falcons team, Andrew Clare. He's got a nagging foot injury, and likely we will not see him playing in the second half, Mike. All right, KT, great information. Thank you. First down run with no Clare. It's been Bryson Denley and Davon Jones doing the running, and Denley's there for just a couple of yards. You know, it, you talk about it, Doug, and you live through it. Chris Sims lived through it. College football and practice every day, every day, every day, and pretty much five or 40 guys end up playing the majority of the plays. So what an opportunity it is for some of uh, Scott Leffler's bench, although he does not have many reserves, but certainly Brian Kelly, to get those guys rewarded for the opportunity to play in a game setting here this afternoon. Absolutely, and the starters love that opportunity for the backups to get in there, get an opportunity to play, maybe score a touchdown, make a big play. How about for the Bowling Green kids? Maybe someone scores a touchdown, makes the big play. That is a moment they can remember. That's true. Boy passes, Denley, nice move to make Drew White miss. And then he's pushed out of bounds, and Denley might have been shaken up at the back end of that play when he took the hit out of bounds. Jeremiah Usu Koromoa 
over there on the tackle. Denley has some fight in him now. He just had a little run play where they were running power out or strong side play. Busted like three tackles, spinning, got a five, six yard gain out of that, catches the ball on the sideline and breaks a tackle there. It's a shame to see him banged up. Denley, the uh, smallest of the three running backs that they feature, Andrew Clare being one of them that Catherine told you was out earlier. So Davon Jones will be in there. It's a first down picked up for Bowling Green. Picked up 10 first downs now in this game. There's Jones with the inside run. Julian Aquara there for the tag. Osmar Bilal there as well as Notre Dame's starters begin the second half. That's typical, Doug. If a team has a big lead, usually come out of the locker room. The starters play that first drive, and then you start assessing substitution patterns from that point. Yeah, you want to set the tone for the second half. You want your starters to get used to the routine of going back out on the field. None of this, you know, take the break at half and be done. Back out on the field, ready to play the rest of the half if necessary, but usually just that first drive in a, in a blowout situation to create a tempo, and then your, your backups will come flooding in in the second series. Second and nine. Notre Dame brings pressure. Tango Veloa Amosa chases the quarterback. Boyd's pass is incomplete over there on the sideline. Tariq Bracey, who is starting because of the injury to Sean Crawford, is there in coverage. And Bracey will be an important player for Notre Dame through the next month of this season. Tango Veloa Amosa beats downs to the inside. No one picking him up. And the race is on. Great job by Lloyd running away from pressure and just unloading the ball and getting it out of bounds. Actually, put him in a spot where he's. That's a nice defensive play by Bracey. That ball was on target. Ugly looking injury, dislocated left elbow for Crawford last week. Uh, when you saw it, you thought it may be out for the season. Out three to four weeks, and he has been working as hard as possible in the training room to try to get range of motion backs and get it braced, as you saw on the sideline. This is complete in the middle of the field. Quentin Morris again. Jalen Elliott, the captain of the Irish, a first down, but a 15-yard gain for Morris. Nice timing, nice throw on the slant right. Route and tight coverage. Morris with the completion. I mean, there's some fight here. You know, they continue to battle. Yeah, you were talking about Crawford. And it's just amazing the mentality to fight back from injury after injury and just wanting to be a part of it and get back out on the field. And Achilles, two ACLs, and now the elbow. And, and he's, you know, the first thing he thinks about is when can I get back on the field? Seven catches for Morris on the day. Back to Davon Jones on the ground for a yard. We're talking about Bowling Green and the head coach, Scott Leffler, the tradition that is there in this program. Urban Meyer, also an Notre Dame assistant, was a coach here. Dave Clawson, who's got a terrific season going with Wake Forest so far. And after Clawson, it was Dino Babers, who is now up at Syracuse and had the orange of the top 25 last year. So this is a place where coaches have come and built the program. You mentioned how far down it was after uh, the tenure of Mike Jinks, four and eight, two and ten, and then one and six before he was let go at the end of last season. Loy rolls it into the short side. That pass is incomplete as it's broken up, and Austin Doris pushed out of bounds and then ran into the bench area. Lloyd Carr, such an influence on Leffler, the former Michigan coach and Hall of Famer, was his coach in college, and he told Scott Leffler, who had other job opportunities to become a head coach, if you're going to take a job, take one at a place that has a tradition. Because if you, if you can bottle and sell tradition, you make millions. You can't do it. But Bowling Green has tradition, has history, has support. So his feeling was of the jobs in the MAC that he could take, there was an attractiveness because of that. And those coaches we just showed you part of that tradition. Irish rushing five. Loy getting rid of it and complete again to Morris, who gets his eighth catch. About half of them have been for first downs. And the Notre Dame 29 yard line again at 15. That's a phenomenal throw. He's falling away. Nice little shake here by Morris to slip by Jalen Elliott. And the ball's there on time, on rhythm. And he's getting rushed, falling away, and throwing. Not quite chuck and duck. But a spin and throw. Nice, nice job of delivering the football. Eight catches, 82 yards. Quentin Morris. He moved his position. He was a wide receiver. And the thinking, Doug, was, you know, if they if they move him to this what they call an A tight end, a lot of what you see here in motion, be easier to get him the ball. 
as a guy of the move. He's been doing that so far. Well, especially if you don't have pure passers at the quarterback position, the tight end routes you can run now from the inside. You're, first of all, you can match up a lot of times on linebackers or at best as a safety. So now you're running these little flat routes and movement things where the, the quarterback can just get. It's not necessarily a downfield route, although that was a corner, and hit him up the seam as well, but the easy throws. And Garst remains as the standard tight end. Run by Loy out of bounds on that far side over in front of the Bowling Green bench. And it's funny, you look at the Bowling Green bench, so you see college football and so many players with their thin scholarship numbers. Obviously, it's a road game, so you don't have all your walk-ups here, but it's such a small gathering of players that that's everybody. Well, that, that other side of the bench is completely empty. Early in the game, the offense was on one beat, the defense over to the other end, and the little special teams right in the middle, and they were like three little groups, like three huddles, basically. All right. That's it. That's everybody on the trip. And you are limited when you make road trips, but they don't have the numbers that they would like. A third and nine. They've converted two of those today, but Denley will be stopped short. 23 yard line, fourth down. They go for a field goal, try to get some points on the board. Yeah, they will. They will, but I thought that would be like a four down call. If you're running the ball in third and nine there, that you get in range to, to go for it on fourth down. But points on the board would be important for the third. And they need them. Uh, struggled a bit with his confidence will be big for Bowling Green season going forward if they can get some points on the board here with the junior from Chesterton Indiana 40 yard field goal attempt to avoid uh, a shutout to this point and that kick was blocked Irish with penetration able to block it and they will take over Julio Naquara, who was the defensive player of the week last week with the three sacks, he's going to be the guy to get through. Bowl over the offensive lineman Cameron Stage, and then a block kick to his impressive Notre Dame resume. Some know that Wednesday night hockey, the Devils and the Flyers will get us going on Wednesday night on NBCSN, and the Kings and the Canucks in Vancouver, right on NBCSN. Of course, the Devils play means you get a chance to see the number one pick of uh, last year's draft. Jack Hughes made his debut yesterday. P.K. Subban now with the Devils. A lot of energy around that Devils team. That uh, bears watching this year. Tony Jones Jr. escaping. Well, he said <laughs> in this halftime feature you saw that his superpower that he could get would be speed. Pretty good speed, but he couldn't pull away, but a big gain of 30 well, yards there. 35. Couple, couple of pullers. Bears watching. Kramer and Hainsey. Nice patience by Tony Jones on that, allowing the blocks to happen and then bouncing it to the outside, staying in the hip pocket. So Jones carry takes the Irish out to the 41 yard line. Here he is, waiting for that Liam Eichenberg block. And there he goes down the sideline again. 15-yard line in limited work. Jones with some good yardage gain. Eichenberg seals the left side by himself. He was going to get help from 84 Komet. Here's Eichenberg. But right away, Komet goes up to the next level to get a linebacker because Eichenberg seals that edge. Injured player Jerry Roberts limping off the linebacker, starting linebacker for Bowling Green. Got that right leg tangled up. We saw the Jones numbers briefly. He's now over 100 yards for the second straight game. 102 for Tony Jones Jr. Talked about that nap room. You heard Chris mention it with Liam at halftime. It's a, it's a different world in college football facilities these days. From the 15, here is Book. Five touchdowns in the first half. Incomplete, trying to get it to Cole Komet in the end zone in the second half. Matt looking for a second score. That's maybe the second ball of the day he tries to force. But he's got great protection again. You got Kovet coming up the middle of the field. It's tight. He tries to deliver. And actually, to me, it's kind of encouraging. Go ahead. Try to stick a couple throws in there that are tight throws. I know he, I'm, I'm sure Chip Long wants him to come off and try to throw a seam route there. From the 15-yard line, pressure's coming. Book escapes, and he gets Trimble the tight end. Tommy Trimble gains five to the 10. Yard line, Jawan Hudson on the tackle, true freshman. I say it's encouraging because he, he he wants to make these throws in rhythm and on time and try to make 
the tough throws occasionally. And here, you know, he gets on the corner. That's Ian Book being an athlete. Unblocked guy coming at you, make him miss, get outside and, and dump it off. But I felt like in recent weeks he's been hesitant to make the tight throws, even when they are there. You can get a first down just inside the six, trying to keep that perfect season inside the 20 going. And Book throws it off the hands of McKinley. If he uh, would have had it in front of him, could have run through it, would have scored. So the Irish love to try to kick a field goal. I guess he didn't want a six touchdown pass. What do you think? <laughs> it's just it's really on the back shoulder. I'm sure McKinley thinks he should have caught this ball. But it's, it makes it a little tougher than it needed to be. It's on the back shoulder with it. Just get it out in front. He's made that throw 100 times today. Maybe not 100. 100 times through camp. Through camp for sure, right. Jonathan Doerr will come on to kick it. It'll be a 27 yarder. Missed a 47 yarder last week and a poor special teams effort by the Irish. Overall against Virginia. You can see that cleaned up this week was the coaching staff. Doerr a part of that. And for the right hash, he bangs that one through. Now three of four on the season. So the blocked field goal, the first one for Notre Dame since Music City Bowl. Of oh, yeah, right? Terrific show from Chicago. The band at halftime, Peter Schiaparelli, who is the manager of the band Chicago, was one of the guys carrying Aaron Parsegian off the field. He played for Notre Dame in the 69, 70 seasons. And that's a famous statue that's out front of the stadium. Ball bounced in the end zone, so that is a touchback to ball's dead. Schifarelli, and that's the Chicago connection with Notre Dame. Jersey Mike sub above the rest, the defense for Andy. Well, the defensive speed has been amazing, and Jameer Jones is having himself a day, and he had the play of the week last week here blowing through the tailback, but the fact that he was probably going to redshirt and save this season and with the injury to Dalen Hayes is now taking over in the D-line. The D-line is phenomenal. We know that, the talent. But then the thing that takes us to the next level, guys, is Clark Lee and some of the schematics. He, he stresses out offensive protection with how he lines, go, uh, lines up, and it uh, really is impressive. So, I'm so impressed by everything Clark Lee does on the defensive side of the ball. Irish been rolling the defensive linemen in. Now they're going to get a lot of second teamers in the rest of this game. Snap is messed up there, and Loyal have to take a knee. Loss of five. Catherine Tappan, one of those players from the back end of the defense, still on the field. Kyle Hamilton. Yeah, Mike, Kyle Hamilton's father, Derek, actually played professional basketball in Europe, and his brother, Tyler, currently plays at William & Mary. His mom, Jackie Hamilton, told me that she knew her son was committed on football when he compiled nearly 40 offers across Division I programs. She was happy with his decision to switch, and she told me a six-foot-four point guard is a dime a dozen, but a six-foot-four safety is a diamond. He's a unicorn, and that just doesn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's true. Hey, you'd rarely see... And Doug and Chris, you guys can speak to this. You spent so much of your life looking at safeties from the pocket as the run there takes it out to the 27-yard line. Mom Jackie here watching today. Rewards for her son when she comes up with those pick sixes. It's, uh, it, she's going to see a lot of reward-worthy plays. Chris, how rare for you to see a safety at that size, 6'4"? Well, they don't exist, really. That's the amazing thing. And especially don't exist with the kind of hips and explosion he has. You know, to have length, the Doug can speak to this, when you have that type of length in the middle of the field, it's hard to want to throw the ball over him, around him, because of the range. And then, of course, the uh, radius as far as his arms reaching out everywhere. Well, he has great range, middle of the field, seam to seam. Pass caught by Mars. He's going to be over the line first down, but then lost the ball. It's a fumble. Let's see if the recovery happened out of bounds. It did. So Bowling Green will keep it. They'll keep the chains moving. First down for PG. But what amazes me more than anything about him is he's willing to come up and stick his nose in there and hit in his range secondary wise. This is his first game in Notre Dame Stadium. A tip ball that gets on him in a hurry, composed enough to find it take it and get into the end zone. First play at Notre Dame Stadium. That's right. For Kyle Hamilton. The other, the other aspect was last week's interception. He was working the weak side of the coverage and looking at the weak side receiver and he had nothing. His eyes went back to the quarterback, found the receiver coming from the strong side and broke in front of the ball. It's just a great play. First down for Bowling Green. Loyal roll it and throw to Davon Jones who won't catch it. It's incomplete. He said uh, a lot of second teamers are out there for the Irish right now, but Hamilton's out there playing free safety. He has played a lot in the dime situation, six DBs. Over Notre Dame has played five DBs. There's a chance for him to play and control that position we see. Here. He, Jalen Elliott, and Louis Gilman worked so well that safety position for Notre Dame. And, and we asked 
right away when we got here during the summer and heard about Hamilton. Does he have that ability, like Chris said? Chris, you're talking about flipping your hips and do the. Boy, his range of motion is uh, not like a 6'4 guy's we normally see. No, definitely not. I mean, there's only one guy I can think of in the NFL, even George Ialoka, who played for the yep. Bengals for a while. But I really think if they wanted to put Hamilton at corner and they were in a bind, he could pull it off. He's that special in that league. Starting the new class, Brian Kelly's staff is really gone a different way here with recruiting. But, you know, when you're Notre Dame, because of the academics here and the, the true school aspect, players it kind of takes that top 300 and cuts it almost in half the guys you could actually go after and recruit and this coaching staff has really found a great groove investing time into the right guys and Hamilton's one of those examples boy third down pass is caught out of bounds at the 41 yard line again it is the busy Quentin Morris Tariq Bracey on the coverage it'll be fourth down you're talking about Brian Kelly talking about the quality of kid he goes after. And you know, he used to bring one or two marginal guys that might be a challenge to get through the Notre Dame system. But you wind up spending so much time with those kids that he's eliminated that aspect of it. And he just goes after the top quality kids academically and physically to fill this team. And they are as athletic as anyone in the country. And they've been able to find the, the mix of both. This is. Punt caught by Joe Wilkins, who goes back to catch a punt, usually Chris Fink, but as I mentioned, backup seeing action for Notre Dame, including Wilkins with a punt catch. He brings it out to the 25. As expected, one sided game. Ian Book's day is done with five touchdown passes and very good numbers. So Phil Jerkovic will get what likely will be his most significant time for Notre Dame. Sophomore in the Pittsburgh area, Pine Richland High School. Played 10 snaps in two games last year, seven against Wake Forest, three against Florida State. Had an 11 snap drive against New Mexico. And now he is in for extended action. And throws to Javon McKinley, who catches it and runs it for a gain of 26 yards. Out of bounds at the 49 with Antonio Sorlongo in on the tackle. A little stop route out on the outside with movement. And I'll tell you what, if Joe Wilkins picked up that block, he was gone. Wilkins didn't get his head around quite quick enough to make the block to spring him. Offensive line is also flipped. The backups there as well. Jerkovic will step up and take off. He did run in high school. And here puts his shoulder down inside the 40 to get to the 38-yard line. Brandon Hurst, the tackle. Give me the book on Jerkovic. Who's book's back? <laughs> He has a strong arm, and Chip Long likes to take shots with him and turn guys loose down the field. Uh, throw, he's much improved. He pushes the ball a little bit in his throwing motion. And because of his size, you don't anticipate him to be able to run with the ball like he can. Jamir Smith runs, no gain. Our tremendously prepared producer, Rob Hyland, has had this for us week after week after week. <laughs> the background of Phil Jerkovic. We will share it with you one more time. 8,000 career passing yards, 71 touchdowns, over 11,000 career total yards, a state champion. We know football in Western Pennsylvania is good and important. He did that. He had to pick it up a little bit in terms of the offense last year. A little more confident now. He takes this shot down the field, incomplete, intended for Joe Wilkins. Chris Sims, as you've watched Jerkovic, what do you notice about him? What stands out about him? Well, his size. He does have a presence when he sits in the pocket, and you talked about his athleticism. It's rare to be 6'5", 230, and run the way he does. He's got to smooth out the motion a little bit, but it, it does pop off his hand. There's no doubt about that. He spins it. What we saw in camp to what mm -hmm. we've seen in practice lately is even more improved than from last spring. Third and 11, tall in the pocket, throw it up top. Avery Davis with the catch. And he's down at the six yard line. That, that is a play there where his size benefits him. He's got a little pressure in the pocket, somebody coming up into his face. And because he's so big, he can still kind of just get it up over the guys and, and make a pretty accurate throw. Hurst, 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 the middle linebacker, was running to get the middle field, kind of got his head around and was lost. First and goal, Jerkovic throws to Davis for the touchdown. That's exactly the result Notre Dame wanted to see with Jerkovic's first series. 
Well, you talk about a big, tall quarterback that can stand in the pocket and deliver down the field, but he's doing the movement plays as well. It's an easy touchdown pass to Davis, but the, to have the ability to go ahead and do some of the zone read stuff, some of the bootleg stuff at his size, makes him dangerous because now he can stand in the pocket as well and be that big, tall quarterback in the pocket. His first career touchdown pass, and Harrison Leonard, the backup kicker, comes on to knock it through. Coach Jacoby did a lot of touchdown passes in his high school career. A couple years since he's been able to throw one. And he does right there. Avery Davis with the catch in the end zone. Nothing. He still got on that sweet second half goal you just saw. Got over there to watch a little bit. Seven shutouts uh, as part of the eight wins for Notre Dame women's soccer program thus far this year. RB Marlowe's going to take it back to the 20 yard line. They pick up my Syracuse team, but Nikki Adams' crew is just building and turning around the program. Catherine? Yes, well, Mike, I'm down here with Romeo Okwara, the defensive end for the Detroit Lions. Everyone remembers him from his days playing here. And, of course, your brother here as well, Julian. So, Romeo, you guys are enjoying a bye week this week. You're back on campus. Describe what it feels like when you get to come back here to Notre Dame. I mean, it's amazing, especially having my brother here. I mean, such a blessing. Um, example, he's having a great year so far and just having fun watching the game. A great year indeed. Three sacks last week for him. He's got another one today. What do you see when you watch Julian play? A little bit of myself sometimes. It's kind of weird. Um, I didn't get to watch him much in high school, but it's really awesome just being able to come out here and watch him here. And um, it's, just, it's awesome. When you look at this defense as well, the performance they had last week, I know you're watching this team on a regular basis. What do you see from them? Um, they're obviously playing really good defense. Um, today, I guess that's a really great team. Um, had a really tough loss um, the game before, um, but they're, they're really battling out here, uh, doing the things that they do to stop, stop the offense. Romeo, enjoy your bye week. We'll look forward to seeing you on the 14th against the Packers. Thank you. All right, Mike, back to you. Mike Catherine, yeah, the Lions play the Monday nighter next week after a terrific performance against Kansas City. Chiefs won that game, but it's cool to see Romeo Aquara made a name for himself here. Julian following in his footsteps and has uh, really turned his play up over the last two years. Uh, Doug turned into that, uh, that guy other teams are worried about stopping on the defensive front for the Irish. We've seen that over the last year and a half with Julian, his ability to be athletic and physical in the defensive end position to make plays. The first couple of weeks, he only had three tackles. We were a little concerned that it wasn't happening. And two weeks ago, played exceptionally well against Georgia, and last week, it broke open with three sacks, two fumbles, fours, a fumble recovery. And one of those, his first one, I mean, he's chasing the quarterback from behind, trying to chase him and bring him down. And at the last instant, kind of puts his hand in there and tips the ball away because it's all was loose. Just a great awareness on the field. And he, between him and uh, Khalid Kareem at the defensive end positions, they're dynamic. Grant Lloyd hands the run for the first down by Davon Jones. He takes it to the 36. Scott Leffler is running the clock as much as possible, trying to just limit the damage for his Bowling Green team. They'll get to the line. They'll take, they're not even going to run a play in the quarter here. He's going to call Loy over until we'll go to the fourth quarter because the play clock hadn't even started yet. So he's just trying to bleed as much time as possible and not give the ball right back to Notre Dame. And has moved the game along. It's been a briskly played first 45 minutes with the fourth quarter ahead. And in three seconds, it will be the end of the third quarter. And the score is Notre Dame 45, Bowling Green nothing. Back to Notre Dame Stadium after these messages from your local station. Where would you rather be than right here, right now? Watching Notre Dame football on NBC. Presented by Gillette. Score by quarter is brought to you by Gillette. Parents, if your kids haven't FaceTimed here, text you in the last few weeks, have a chance to look at them. See them over there in the student section here in South Bend. Mike Tirico, Doug Flutie, Chris Sims, Catherine Tappan, Terry McCall, all with you here at Notre Dame Stadium. Irish pitching the shutout through three against Bowling Green. Bryson Denley with the carry there. A loss of a yard on first down. Notre Dame, the sandwich game as we talked about after Virginia and Georgia with USC a bye week and then Michigan ahead. They have done exactly, Doug, what Brian Kelly set out at the start of the week. And he told us yesterday they practiced so well, he was confident they were going to come out and not sleepwalk through the game, as they did against Ball State last year. And that is the biggest challenge. It's yourself in these type of matchups, in these situations, sandwiched between two tough games, to challenge yourself, as Brian Kelly would put it, championship traits, to work hard every day, prepare, 
and ignore who the opponent is and be at your best. Boy on the pass is complete with a good hit by Paul Mawala, who went to the aforementioned Mishawaka High School. That was Chris Sims, Christian Sims, with the catch. Probably scared Sims on the sideline, thought I was coming to him, right? Playing wide receiver now, Chris. <laughs> You scared me. I did. I was, I was sitting next to Catherine here, and you said my name, and I was like, oh. Uh, yeah, he, he's working. He's just sitting next to Catherine, hanging out on the sideline. Yeah. Do you have your umbrella? Well, not yet. Uh, can I get a pretzel and a Coke <laughs> down here or something? Well, that, that Sims is 1M shy of uh, our Chris Sims. It's a, it's a 2M Chris Sims. And that is Christian Sims, a high school wide receiver from Norcross, Georgia, who is uh, new to this Bowling Green program. Third and nine for Grant Lloyd. The kid out of New Washington, Ohio, throws a complete big hit on R.B. Marlowe by Kyle Hamilton, who we've mentioned multiple times. You see his sidelines, a sideline range, it sets up fourth down. He's a basketball player in high school as well. He's an athlete. He's six foot four, and then he delivers blows. He comes in as a safety and just blows people out. He's only a freshman. He's only a freshman. He plays a physical game at the safety position. And his athleticism is second to none back then. Everybody in the Notre Dame coaching staff try to pump the brakes on, but then when you ask them, hey, what do you think of Hamilton? They're like, wow, wow, kid's really good. And we've seen it every time he's played. Moore goes on his plate, feeds it up. But Phil Jerkovic hasn't thrown a touchdown in a game in a, almost a couple of years. So his reaction, even though it made it 45 to nothing, was like a little kid. Because that's his first touchdown in college. I don't care who you are, how big a recruit you are, and all the things. You're in Notre Dame, you're a big time college football. I don't care who the opponent is or the score, it's your first touchdown pass. You Enjoy your first? And he did. Oh, yeah, we were playing at Penn State. I did not expect to get in the game. We're down 38 right. nothing, and I took us down the field and hit Scott and Isaac on a quarter round. And I thought, I thought that would be the highlight of my career. I really did. I thought I was done. <laughs> I'd never see the field again. A couple of hundred after that. The 21 yard line run up the middle to the 26 yard line for Sebo Flemister. Sims, you remember your first touchdown pass? I definitely do. We were blowing out Stanford at home down in Texas. I, it was one of those where I threw the ball about three feet and then the running back ran for like oh, yeah. 70 yards. <laughs> and I was like, I'll take it, whatever it is. So only a couple of years away from the legend to grow. That's probably, you can't lie anymore about how great the throw was. This one's deflected in the air and nearly. Intercepted. I mean, in the old days you could just. Can say I say this one second, coach? Was. Go ahead. Too short. He's too short. Dracovic. Yeah, he got it bad. All right, that's get, get that over with. At uh, six foot four. Yeah. I was talking about short quarterbacks. So they get passes tipped and deflected. Right. It happens. They get in the passing lane. The hand gets up. Height has nothing to do with it. Nice defensive play by Purse. Okay, go back. I'm sorry. No, no, that's okay. I regret. John Dirksen, Trevor Rulin, Colin Grunhard, Dylan Gibbons, Josh Lug, the second team offensive line in for the Irish at the moment. As Jerkovic gets out of the pocket, the flag is down as he gets right near the first down marker. And let's see if that had anything to do with the blocking that was going on there to try to give Jerkovic the space to pick up the first down. Holding, Holding defense, defense, number one. one. Ten yard penalty for the end of the play. First down. I, ref I refer to you as coach when I <laughs> want to explain my situation to my position coach on the field. <laughs> Look, I, I'm willing to play the role no matter how I'm cast here. There's the hold. And downfield, it's Braden Lindsay, the receiver who tried to throw that initial block and then that second block to free Jerkovic and take him to the 42 yard line. Does it matter at this point? Like, it, look, it's clear Scott Leffler is trying to get out of here as quickly as possible. He's running to the clock and Bowling Green has it. But if you're Brian Kelly, you want to see Jerkovic throw the ball even though the score is there. As he rolls and throws across his body, which is always dangerous, but Kinley makes that catch and it's a game of nine. Now, your sportsmanship, you're saying, just run the ball and get out of here. As a coach, you're saying, I want to see this guy get some live reps. See Bo Flemish serve with a nice block. But yes, no doubt about it. Get him used to get his sweat on, get through a game, be efficient, grade out well for the game, so that when that time comes that you really need him, he's comfortable. Here's Flemister with the run to the 40. Two yard line and Chris these become valuable snaps because if Ian Book in a tight game is injured or even has to come out for a series or two you, you, you need that second guy ready to save the game ready to go and I'm, I've been impressed with what I've seen uh, from Jakovic to this point you know sometimes when you get out in the game and it just becomes real again you don't think about mechanics or think about every little thing the coach tells you he's just playing and reacting right now and I think doing a really good job. 
number three quarterback for Notre Dame is Brendan Clark. We saw him a bit against New Mexico and there was a time during the summer camp that it looked like Clark would have a chance to be the number two because Dracovic wasn't performing well. There he is moving to the right being chased by Purse got away from the linebacker cut back inside seeking space down the sideline. Dracovic shows his ability to run as he gets to the 24 yard line. This initially is an RPO that he wants to throw the route but the routes not run so he's stuck holding the ball. So we're taking off and Dracovic I tell you at his size it's deceiving his change of direction his quickness. Very nice 19 on the run there this a keep on the zone read will get out to the 17 yard line so Dracovic in camp was struggling as he did towards the end of last year there's a heart to heart we want to fall camp. Hey, do you really want to be the guy? If not, we're going to need to get Brendan Clark ready to be the backup. And from that point on, he started to do the things that he needed to do to be the number two quarterback here. And, uh, the Irish coaching staff with Brian Kelly, offensive coordinator Chip Long, Tom Reese, the former Irish quarterback, who's the QB coach, all have been happy with the way Jerkovic has played to earn this number two job and give them a little more comfort. Yeah, and talking to Chip Long, that was a pivotal moment. That was like he was ready to move on. And uh, you know all of a sudden he took it seriously he, he started working all those things were coming together. We've seen the progression even from camp to now when we go to practices and they're very confident he steps on the field. Now he is not as adept at some of the protection things and as far along as where Ian Book might be in checking protections and doing everything. But uh, most of the playbook if not all of it is is there for him. There is Tom Reese former Notre Dame quarterback and uh, a great resource for these guys. Not only yeah, we're showing you on TV, Tom. Sorry, <laughs> man. Not just as a resource from a quarterback perspective, but Chris to have a position coach who played quarterback at Notre Dame. That's so important for these guys. It really is important. I mean, again, he's been in their shoes, so he can tell them how to react on, off the field, different situations. And these, you know, going back to something you said before, Mike. Hey, Brian Kelly can't worry about coaching Bowling Green. He's got to right, worry about his right. team. And there's a chance next week, hey, Ian Book might sprain an ankle. And he needs Jakovic to be, in, to be able to come in and execute the offensive play. And this game will give him the confidence to say, hey, this is not too big. I can get out here on this field and make a few plays. And I think most coaches now understand those situations. Whereas in a different, there's there are certain things you can do that are deemed as this guy's running up the score. Right. Like you're watching here. Notre Dame would like to go quicker tempo for Dracovic so it's game speed. They're bleeding the play clock just like Bowling Green was. To minimize the snaps and maximize the completion of the competition. Lindsay on the edge to the six yard line. Well, there's a nice reaction for him. He saw a full out blitz and he could not run the ball. They had a run play call but you have that pass option off and out to the outside. He has to pull the ball and throw it out there because you're outnumbered against the blitz. And that's something that the coaches will look at on film and say hey great job. He's going to let it run again as you were saying you get back to Tom Reese. Even he's he just left the system a few years ago so his plays are still in the system when they go back and they look at cut ups and and uh, training film. So it, it earns instant respect from the quarterbacks in the room. Second and five Jerkovic on the game Jamir Smith get the first down pad popping hard hit and run to the one. Be first and goal for the Irish as they look to get it to over 50 points for the second time this year. 66 against New Mexico. Running hard, get near that goal line. You can smell it and get after it. You know, we should point out in the running back world as the rain starts to come down a little bit here in South Bend, Jafar Armstrong, who's been out since really the opening quarter of the Louisville game, and was going to be the guy, the number one of the back rotation. Armstrong getting closer to being back got a chance to play against Southern California next Saturday night in primetime on NBC. Dracovic switching guys around trying to get them lined up properly and Brian Kelly will take a timeout as he saw the play clock was running down and there was confusion. Timeout Notre Dame their first time out of the half. Timeout. Be right back. The game will be handing out 100 grand in cash prizes. Download the predictor app now for your chance to win. See you on Football Night in America, 7 Eastern Time before Indianapolis and Kansas City are Sunday nighter from Arrowhead. First and goal, and Sebo Flemisters in the end zone 
for another Notre Dame touchdown, the seventh of the day. It's been a game where the Notre Dame offensive line has dominated. Now the backups are in, and it's their chance to do it. And I'll tell you, on the goal line, Sebo Flemister brings a little power to it. He does. He showed that last week, and he's not afraid to stick his nose in there. Kind of peculiar to see someone stand straight right. up and down on the goal line. <laughs> Harrison Leonard, Jamestown, Rhode Island. He's the backup place kicker. Got a couple opportunities against New Mexico, a couple opportunities here today. And he bangs that through. 52. Love. Couple moments, iconic programs under the lights in one of college football's great venues. Next Saturday night on NBC, Brian Kelly and the Irish take on the Southern California Trojans, USC's annual mid October visit, biannual every couple of years. As Notre Dame goes out the week after Thanksgiving to the West Coast to play the Trojans. This year, it's here. And the 91st meeting, 874th in a row. USC has obviously gone through multiple starting quarterbacks with injuries and been a lot of uh, unsettled in the USC football program. I went back and watched the Notre Dame one of the USC Washington game uh, last week. And on their third quarterback, it impacts what they can do. You know, the health of Keaton Slovis, uh, the freshman who came in and played well. It will be very important to watch this week as we get set for that game next Saturday night. Yeah, Matt Fink uh, last week threw a few interceptions down by the red zone area, a couple poor decisions, but they have receivers Pittman leading the way of guys that can go up and get the ball. And it's scary. It, doesn't, it didn't matter who was at quarterback when, when they went to Slovis. Now they went to Fink. Slovis may be healthy. They, they throw some of those 50 50 balls. Those receivers go up and get them. And Carr, I think Stephen Carr and uh, Tailback is very elusive. There have been a lot of questions around the USC program. One question there is not is the physical talent. There are still plenty of game changing players there. Pittman, St. Brown, the receiving core, as you pointed out, uh, extraordinary. And that's such a great rivalry. When you see those uniforms, those teams here or at the Coliseum in Southern California, it is the essence of the roots of the sport. It's amazing you say those uniforms. That's the first thing that pops into yeah. my mind. You know, at the Coliseum and the uniforms and Tommy Trojan and the horse, the whole bit. It's it's really a cool matchup and it, it's fun. Look forward to being here next Saturday night for that. We'll have it for you, of course, here on NBC. Shane Simon, the sophomore from West Orange, New Jersey, makes the tackle for the Irish. It's third down, under six minutes on a thankfully turning clock. Did I insult the rest of your line by saying the horse instead of travel? You've cleaned it up okay. now, so it's all good. It's all the horse. Clay Helton uh, brought in Graham Harrell from Texas Tech to be the offensive coordinator, the new offensive coordinator. Of course, that was ticketed to be Cliff Kingsbury before he got the job with the Arizona Cardinals. And the offense has at times looked quick with the JT Daniels knee injury. You mentioned Keaton Slovis, the concussion. So uh, three quarterbacks that have been halfway into the season. The Trojans off this week. As Nigel Seeley gets the carry. And Howard Cross, the third, the son of the Terrific NFL player for 13 years, former Irish star Howard Cross. Does a sensational job with Bob Papa on the Giants radio broadcasts. Howard Cross, the third. There have been a lot of good words we've heard about uh, that young man, part of the future for the Irish inside. And the three and out is forced. Howard Cross went to Alabama. That's right. It's my mistake. Kick it away one more time. We have seen kick after kick after kick from Matt Naranjo. Joe Wilkins going to roll it down, let it go to the 21. There is Matt. He's been busy, but he's been good on the day. He's had multiple kicks over 50 yards. Well done. 52 nothing, four and a half to go here in South Bend. Neatly places over the statue of the four horsemen. The horse racing promo. Judge Mont, Judge Mont Spinster features the horse elate. The only female in the Breeders' Cup Classic rankings. It's her final prep before, in all likelihood, taking on the boys in the Breeders' Cup Classic on November 2nd. You can see that tomorrow, 4.30 Eastern on NBC. It is a Brendan Clark quarterback series here for the Irish. And Mick Asaf, the running back, the senior from Atlanta, will get the carry. He'll lose a yard. It's his fourth carry of the year. So Phil Jakovic ran a couple of drives for Notre Dame and looked pretty good.
Nice little outing, completed some balls, showed his athleticism. He moved around a little bit, made some throws down the field, got his first touchdown pass. And executed the offense, I think, more than anything. There are no procedure penalties, anything like that. And Brendan Clark from Midlothian, Virginia, comes in the game. 85 career touchdown passes, over 7,000 yards. They have liked his presence throughout. It's not a cockiness, but it's a confidence uh, in the system and in his high school quarterbacking they saw good attention to detail and he has uh, opened uh, some eyes in his first semester on campus here again it's ASAP with the carry when you see Clark throw the ball when you see him throw the ball it just is uh, it comes off natural it's a nice fluid motion he, he's impressive with that but he's not going to get the opportunity now they're just going to milk the clock here and run it out so he's kind of probably going to get frustrated at just handing the ball off and even if they do call plays that are normally RPO or run pass options he's got to hand take the, the ball. pass option he, out yes he's so, got a hand off you see those uh, terrific numbers at Manchester High School including just one interception in that senior season Asaf trying to get that first down trying to stay out there and the Notre Dame bench hopping up and down after the nice run from the senior from Atlanta but that's the other aspect of this when the guys that don't usually get an opportunity to get on the field get on the field to make plays the entire team is pulling for them they, they know how everyone on this field works just as hard that's such a good point just yep. as hard and they don't get the opportunity to get on the field so when they do everyone is happy for them Guys who've been in the program for multiple years, senior like that, and you can see Ian Book, you just kind of help for the coaches, help Clark, just take your time, just bleed that play clock down. And here he will run it again with Asaf to the 36. So those of you who were out and about, the Pokes is brought to you by Gillette, Ian Book, five touchdown passes in the first half. That's a Notre Dame record in a half. He ties a career high. Tony Jones Jr., over 100 for the second straight game chase Claypool two touchdown receptions in this one now four on the season the Irish defense two sacks an interception and they've limited Bowling Green to 228 yards pretty clean game too. just one turnover that was the last play of the first half Bowling Green six penalties Notre Dame just one penalty for five yards so I think overall everybody will be pleased on the Irish side of this ledger as Clark pulls it and keeps it and gets a first down to 45 and that should be that and Bowling Green outmatched here traditionally Mac teams that play in games against power five teams have a better showing as we said at the beginning this program was not in very good shape when Scott Leffler took it over it's going to take at least a couple of years just to get numbers back up they have 22 commits for next year 21 of their team captains so he's going to go the leadership route and hope he can build this thing successfully. It's work ethic that builds the program. They have young guys right now that are playing that probably shouldn't be playing yet. And so you have a lot of freshmen guys. 43% of the team are freshman eligibility. So they have a future down the road, gain experience, get the play. Then the new recruits come in and you build your program. Irish defense will pitch a shutout for the first time in five years. And Brian Van Gorder, the now defensive coordinator of Bowling Green, was the man in charge of the Irish defense when it happened against Michigan. Mm -hmm. Frustrating to return for Van Gorder and the other coaches who have coached uh, against Notre Dame in this stadium before with a thin team. But quality day for Clark Lee and company as the Irish took care of business exactly the way they had hoped. Play clock not started, no need to snap. And 52 to nothing will be the final score as the Irish come up with the shutout. There's a lot of respect that Brian Kelly has for Scott Leffler and Scott Leffler talking to him this week has for what this Notre Dame team is and what Brian Kelly has uh, built as the Irish go to four and one and here he is with Catherine. Coach, another solid defensive effort last week against UVA. Today, the shutout against Bowling Green. What can you say about the job Clark Lee has done with this defense? Oh, he's done a great job, and, and obviously the whole staff has been, you know, really locked in on 
you know, preparation each and every week, and, and that's really what it takes. Uh, there's a new challenge each and every week, and I think our guys have responded well, and Clark's done a really good job of getting the team ready. Next up, a big rivalry game for you guys as USC comes into town. What is the biggest challenge when you're preparing for an opponent like that this week? Well, our guys know USC, and it's it's always a tough, you know, game, and they're extremely talented. They always are. Uh, it's going to be a very difficult challenge because of their passing game, uh, and we know what to expect. We we needed to get through this game. I think our kids managed it well, and now we've got a stretch of games with USC and then Michigan, which is um, obviously going to be big for our season. So we knew what was in front of us, but we took care of today, and that's what I was most proud of is that they took care of what was in front of them, uh, got this out of the way. Um, and, and now they can focus on USC. You wanted your quarterback, Ian Book, to be more decisive. So what did you see from him this I afternoon? He, I thought he did a nice job today. I mean, I, I think there's obviously uh, good things that happened today. Um, you know, we, we certainly had um, an opportunity to do th things against an undermanned Bowling Green team today. I mean, you know, Scott, you know, he's got a lot of work uh, in front of him, and he'll get it done. Uh, they just got to give them the, the opportunity because obviously they were shorthanded today. But Ian did a lot of nice things, and he's going to get better because of it. Coach, thanks so much. Thanks, Catherine. Mike. All right, KT, thank you. And Brian Kelly will head over to join the Notre Dame team as uh, the students who have stayed through the rain and the band who will uh, join in for the alma mater as Notre Dame continues to sing that song after victories, 14th consecutive home win today. Does, but in any case, they've won 901 for the second time. As you figure that out, here's Catherine with Ian. All right, Mike, thank you very much. Ian, five touchdown passes for you in this game. What specifically were you working on when you came into this afternoon's game? Uh, I was just working on getting the ball to the playmakers. It's my job. Really want to stay in the pocket. The offensive line did a great job tonight. Uh, blocking for me, they always do a good job. And um, it was on me to just get the ball in those guys' hands. We have some really talented players out in the perimeter. and. Uh, that's on me, so I really just want to focus on that. Where would you say that your confidence level is right now? Uh, I'm really confident. Um, this whole offense should be. You know, we, we come out every day and work hard, and the coaches put us in a, a great spot for that. And obviously next week, got a great challenge. You had an opportunity there, too, to see some of your teammates get in. What was it like when you saw Phil Jerkovic, and what is the communication like between you two when he goes into the lineup? Uh, it's awesome. You know, I love Phil. He works hard every day, and to see him go out there and put up great numbers and just be able to command the offense and, that's awesome. I'm really happy for him. Like I said, he works really, really hard. So it's just, it's happy. You know, I'm happy to see that and just really happy for him. How much pressure does it take off of you guys in the offense when your defense puts up a performance like they now have done in back to back weeks? Yeah, week in and week out, our defense, you know, they always have our back. Uh, you know, you can't ask for more as an offense. You know, defense going to put up points and uh, have takeaways, get us the ball back. You can't ask for more. They did a great job and we have a great defense. Turning the page to next week, you have a big rivalry opponent coming in with USC. What do you look forward to with that matchup? Uh, I mean, the, the tradition, honestly. It's just a great rivalry. Um, USC is a great team. Excited to have them here at home. It's going to be a great atmosphere. And again, just, um, another game for this uh, tradition of playing USC. Can't wait for it. It's going to be a great challenge. Ian, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. 
Mike. All right, Catherine, thank you. He's a California kid, more Northern Cal than Southern Cal, but he knows what this rivalry is all about. He was pretty good today, Doug. Uh, great day for him, setting his feet, delivering the ball up the field. This was his first touchdown pass. And that was a nice look off, moved the safety, hit the seam route. Some upfield throws for Ian, which was nice. Uh, just on the day, 16 to 20, I mean, it's just very efficient. And you're going to expect that going up against Bowling Green. But to go through progressions is what he was looking for, what Chip Long was looking for, and he did it. He's working the pocket. Here, he's just got his head on his swivel moving around. But there's going to have to be this downfield part of the passing game that has to come together. And part of that is getting through your progression, maybe hold the ball over that two and a half second mark. Mm -hmm. And he did a nice job of that today. Well, we said at the beginning the opponent was not the quality that you would normally see, but there could be lessons to learn for Notre Dame. Do you think Ian Book heads back into that locker room in a better mental place than he was when he came out of that locker room three and a half hours ago? Absolutely, no doubt about it, because he hit big plays down the field. He did some of the things that I'm sure Chip Long and Brian Kelly were, were asking him to do. And another part of this that I, I was just thinking about towards the end of the game is Brian Kelly bringing attention to what the focus should be that week, every week, yeah. knowing right away the that message. this was a week, the message was traits, worry about us, we get better, okay? The heck with who we're playing this week, we get better. Last week, Virginia, right after a big Georgia game, how he prepared that and yeah. turned it around. I think that sending a message, and this week's going to be easy for him. Yeah, that's USC. an experienced coach, a guy who knows what buttons to hit, and it helps when you've recruited some terrific players, and Cole Komet's one of them who's made a difference and hit three games in the lineup this year, and he's standing by now with Catherine. Cole, congratulations on the win. A touchdown for you as well. The offense seemed to be rolling in this one. Uh, what did you notice from your team in this win? I mean, we just brought the physicality today. It was uh, We came with a high tempo, high pace, and uh, just keeping that uh, physicality throughout the game is a big deal for us. Knowing the opponent that you were facing coming into this game, what specifically were you guys trying to work on as an offense? Just execute our plan, you know, make sure we're making our correct reads for Ian, and then, you know, just executing what we need to do in order to win the game. Is there anything specific that you noticed from Ian in this win today? Uh, he's very decisive today, you know, going to multiple receivers today, and, you know, he looked really good out there today. Turning the page now, you'll have a week to prepare for USC and a big su uh, Saturday night primetime game here under the lights. What do you most look forward to when you face USC? I mean, obviously the tradition of it is just awesome. USC Notre Dame, there's really nothing like it, and uh, it's going to be a great matchup. Cole, thanks so much. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you. All right, Catherine, thank you. Here's the tail of the tape of these two legendary schools tied for 11 second most championships, Heisman Trophy winners, consensus All-Americans. The measurements you use to talk about all-time greatness, these two programs have had it over the years, and that's why there's a standard. So when one of these teams slips a little bit, it becomes a major story. And USC, after double-digit wins in 2016, 2017, losing season last year, have already lost a couple of games. But, Doug, much as Notre Dame has had this role at times, USC has the role now of this could be one that pivots their season and changes a lot of things for the Trojans, even though it's a non-conference game, if they can come to South Bend next week and win. No, about, no doubt about it. Big rivalry game for them. Big marquee game nationally. They're a little bit down, not playing great. I'll tell you, even last week, though, they moved the ball up and down the field. They had red zone turnovers that cost them, exactly. and they, they didn't come out with the win. But they have big play guys at receiver that go up and get the ball. they got a tailback that can take it to distance at any time. They've gone through three different quarterbacks, and all of them – have shown the ability to move that football team and make big plays. It was 28-14 their game in Seattle, and that Washington team is good as we know, so there's nothing to be embarrassed about. But USC holds itself to the standard of victories and playing for championships. They're not in that mode right now, but Clay Helton's going to bring that team in here and try to save their season and other things for that program going forward. And then they'll play Michigan. So Notre Dame with two all-time rivals on their schedule coming up back-to-back, -back. and Liam McHugh, Michigan, one of the teams involved in some of the other games in college football today.